All right, welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast this week. We had a week off, so we're happy to have everyone back. I'm going to share this. Uh, we've got a couple special guests here. Nate Hale, not as special of a guest because he's here say. a lot. <laughs> and you're still special. That's fine. Okay. Um, and then we have Tanya Priest, who ha- it's been a year. Yeah, whole year. It's been a whole year. I mean. It's amazing. Yeah, the things that happen in a year. Yeah, and we're going to find out about that, which I'm actually looking forward to talking about uh, of your growth in the industry. Uh, Which is good. Sure, yeah. I, I've definitely grown. It sounds like a fat joke. Totally isn't. Wow. This will be fun. <laughs> this will be fun. Uh, Nate, I'm going to go ahead and share this while we get some viewers here. If you want to go ahead and kind of go over everything here, sponsors and, and whatnot for the Facebook audience. Yeah, so tonight we're actually going to be smoking the uh, Sublimes Oscuro. Uh, so they make two different ones. You have the Rosado, which is typically round, and then the... Rosado Oscuro, which is going to be a soft box press. And that's coming to us by our main sponsor, Tinderbox at Easton, Easton Town Center, Columbus, Ohio. Stop in anytime between tonight and next Tuesday night when we close up the shop. And you can get 15, that's one five, 15% off either one, either the Rosado or the Oscuro. Uh, if you don't live in the area, uh, we can ship you out some. Just call us up. Minimum uh, five on the order. Yes. And uh, we'll ship yes. that out to you. Again, 15% off, so good deal there. Uh, our second cigar is actually one of my favorite uh, from this company. It's the Romeo and Julieta Reserve, mm-hmm. and that's being brought to us by Monte Cristo USA. Uh, thankfully, we just got the next year of sponsorship locked down, so thank you, Steve, for all the hard work on that. Who's dinging back Can there? someone answer the door? Oh, is that is the doorbell? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> if my guess is it's 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 going to be content, Kyle. Uh, um, and then also we want to thank uh, BS Cigar Company. Uh, we got uh, a couple silvers around. Uh, I think I brought a gold with me in my book bag because you have a gold. I I I, I swapped out. How do you hum- have a gold? I swapped out humidors over the weekend. Um. Uh, because my other one was getting full, mm-hmm. and uh, so when I was hurt. so when I was putting cigars in my other humidor, I was counting. I think I have about uh, about ten or twelve golds. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Right, no, no, getting after it. Wow. No. Okay. I, yeah. So uh, I know you're all a chill. real friend. Like telling me now. I see. I see. No. Next tasting, I'll bring you one. Yes. Okay. okay. There we go. Uh, don't all forget about. Well. Calm down, make a wish. Um, <laughs> and then uh, don't forget about the uh, Patreon page. So patreon.com slash bourbon and BS podcast. Uh, anyone who joins before we finalize uh, some of the tiers or some of the swag and everything, uh, you're automatically going to qualify for some of that. So we got some stuff in the works uh, to be coming down, and someone keeps ringing the damn doorbell. Uh, so please like, share, give us a review uh, while Steve – finishes up uh so tanya tell us how the last two weeks we were supposed to do this last week yeah unfortunately because we live in ohio and it's february there's a thing called snow it's there is that what happened and Ugh. yeah roads kind of sucked they did um, i didn't even make it two miles before i called steve and was like nope not coming because <laughs> i live all the way on the other side of town I got a call before I left my house, so mm-hmm. I was really happy about that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I left early, but then I I couldn't even get traction on the road, and even doing five miles an hour, my analog brakes are kicking on. So I'm like, "Yep, nope, not worth it." Especially <laughs> especially if you know have a couple of drinks and then try and drive yeah. home. I, that's that's not worth it. And it was supposed right. to keep getting worse, and it so did, and it, it did. Yeah. You all set there, Steve? I'm ready. I'm oh, lit up. Awesome. We got uh, about 30-some viewers so lit. far. Yes. Yep, you okay. know it. <laughs> and uh, someone need, needs to uh, pop the cork there, too. Um, can I have are we, are we gonna do you want a the, torch? You what? This is, do you want a torch? I'm dead. Oh. I'm dead to me. I know. Apparently, I'm just there fucking a noob. All right. Uh, go ahead and start the recording while we uh, do this here. Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS Podcast, episode 106. This is delayed by a week. Uh, We had weather. Nate was just talking about that uh, in the Facebook Live, which this is a good time to remind everyone that's on the audio only that you can tune in every week 
on Wednesdays, Whiskey Wednesday, 7.30 p.m.-ish, mm-hmm. depending on uh, what we're doing here, but uh, 7.30, and uh, Facebook page, Bourbon and BS Podcast. We also have a community page you can be involved with, Bourbon and BS Community Page, which is uh, fantastic and growing. And also, we have a Patreon page that's going to get more content very, very soon, patreon.com slash bourbon and BS Podcast. I uh, actually had t-shirts... We're still getting dinging. I swear to God, I'll kill someone in this garage. Um, well, that would be Nate. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, I want to thank our sponsors as we get into this. Uh, Tinderbox at Easton for for providing the uh, the first one. Is it really? <laughs> it shouldn't be. Can you can you wow. can you hit it then? Damn. And on vibrate, are. it shouldn't be on. All right. Is that really my phone? I don't think it's my phone, bud. I hear it over there. All right. Yeah, your phone? I don't even have Facebook pulled up on this. Canyon, what about yours? No, it's absolutely not mine. Mine hasn't made a sound since 20. It's probably our neighbors. Here, go ahead and start that recording over again. Sorry, everyone. Hang on one second here. <laughs> Is it the Kindle? No, I think it's the Kindle. All right, delete that, start it over. Or just go ahead and start it. All right. All right. All right. Thank you for your patience, everyone. We have a phantom noise. <laughs> It's like that one night we had. Remember that, Jake? We were here late at night. We were late at night, and it was, ended up being our neighbors had some sort of ding going on. Yeah. Jesus. All right, go ahead and start that. This is what happens with a big studio audience here. Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS Podcast, episode 106. We are live on Facebook as well. Remind everyone on the audio only that we do Facebook Live 7.30 every week on Wednesdays. This is a time for you to join us in the conversation. If you are watching right now on this Wednesday, it is interesting because we have more people in the garage. We have phantom noises. I can't tell if it's a neighbor dinging, if there's someone at the door, but we are, or I'm just hearing ringing in my ears, which is probably more accurate. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We have our uh, Bourbon and BS podcast Facebook page. We have our Bourbon and BS community page on Facebook where we continue the conversation. We also have our patreon.com slash bourbon and BS podcast where you guys can actually help us out, keep this thing going, and uh, support us. Ryan Jones already on the feed says ding, ding, ding. Thank you, Ryan. Very clever. (laughs) Good to hear from you from Illinois. Uh, That's part of the fun, too. Like I said, you can tune into the conversation. I want to thank our sponsors, Tinderbox at Easton, for providing us with the Sublimes Oscuro, which is the featured cigar this week. That will be, as well as the Sublimes Rosado, which is the original, uh, 15% off. That's 1-5% off at Tinderbox at Easton all through this week until next podcast. And uh, you can get a mailed to you, which will be a minimum of five cigars. Or you can stop in, grab one. You can buy a box, whatever you want to do. But we'll do 15% off. That's 1-5 uh, up until next podcast. Also, Altidus USA, we've got the Romeo Julieta Reserve. Uh, and the Tuba, the Rothschild size, which I love that cigar. That's going to be for our second cigar, which they provide our weekly second cigar, as well as out with um, some things to get things started as far as some merchandise and stuff like that. So I've got some T-shirt designs. Met with the guy today. It's a slow process, unfortunately, especially with all, everything else going on, which reminds me about our Smoking 10 event. 2020, it's our eighth annual Smoking 10 event. We still have uh, tickets available. General admission only, which is uh, 1.30 to 6 o'clock on Sunday, March 15th. And we will have those uh, available until they're gone. We are maxing out at 300 tickets overall. And we've got about, I want to say, 80 or so left. And it's three and a half weeks away. So grab them before they're gone. We've got people such as Christian Aroa coming. We have Rocky Patel coming. Ricky Rodriguez from CAO, which is also, he's also going to be on the podcast prior to the, uh, the 10 event. We have, uh, who am I forgetting here? Eric Espinosa will be Alec. here again. Alec from Alec Bradley, who's been a guest on the podcast as well. And uh, Rafael Nodal from Altidus, who he has his hands on a lot of the newer blends, including some of the ones that are getting all the awards recently. So excited about having all those guys along with the other companies. We are now up to 11 companies uh, instead of 10. As of today, we finalized that La Aurora is going to be there as well. So there's going to awesome. be Ooh. extra cigars. That's why we always put 10 plus or, or 12 plus yeah. cigars. We have La Aurora and Jerry coming from from uh, Miami and Miami Cigars and La Aurora. So we're excited about that. What am I forgetting here? Uh, don't be like the guy that called in the shop last night and go, oh, I'll, I'll get my ticket uh, the day of. Right. 
Not yeah. going to work. Don't want to do that. Uh, Kylie's tuned in. She'll be there from Nat Sherman. We're excited to have Kylie back. And uh, also BS Cigar Company. So the, the latest update with that is that we have BS Silver and Gold coming hopefully in March. We've been saying that for a little while. But uh, we will have those coming here very, very shortly within about a month. I want them for the 10 event, but I also don't want them for the 10 event because we don't have room for all the <laughs> BS cigars coming in. <laughs> the day after the 10 event. Because now we have perfect. about 6,000. Well, truth be told, we have about eight to 10,000 cigars coming in just for that 10 event. So nice. it's, yeah. it's silly. And we're not that we, big. Well, you got to figure. I mean, 300 people, everyone's getting, you know. 10, Stop. 11, 12 cigars. I mean, that's a... Stop trying to make me do math. That, well, no. I, I wasn't asking you to. Um, so, yeah, the math adds up. So, we have about eight to 10,000 cigars along with uh, we've got some special deals on top of the sampler sales on, on oh, the that's uh, sales, sales table. Oh, that killer. Yeah. yeah. So, the sales table is also going to be some raffle. box uh, box sales and specials as well, which I'm excited to uh, kind of expose to everyone as well here coming up shortly. So, more and more details as we get closer but uh, we're excited about that. If you guys are in the Columbus area, we also have people coming from all around, not only of Ohio, but surrounding states and even further away. So we're excited about having all you guys um, to come into town for that. We are doing a, a kind of a postponed episode. Last week, yeah. we had bad weather. That's why we didn't have a, a episode 106 already, and this is uh, not episode 107. We had our probably our worst storm this year. They said since, I think, last, last winter, since last March, we had more snow. All came down at once. Rush hour. I didn't feel safe with uh, everyone coming over to the, the house. Uh, I know you guys didn't really want to no. venture out, but uh, it was just something that we don't want to do, especially when we're going to be drinking and stuff like that. I didn't feel comfortable with having that uh, happen. That's just not what we need yeah. or what we want. So we appreciate everyone kind of hanging tight waiting for us to come back bobby hirschman says boo postpone i thought about doing my own little thing and then i ordered a pizza because i didn't want to go make anything or go back out and i felt bad that the pizza man had to come here dude was a trooper he's like yeah that's my job i was like good for you man it said like estimated like 99 minutes and i was like that seems about right yeah he was here in like 25 i'm like this is amazing how well did you tip him i tipped him well enough okay tipped him well enough like you said, it's his job. I'm not going to like double up the price. You know what I mean? That's easy. <laughs> and then Sean, uh, Here's a quarter, Sean, right? who's in the audience here, as he has been, uh, and he's been on the podcast, he, I completely forgot <laughs> to text him. And I'm Goodness. sitting down in my first piece of pizza, and uh, he's like, goes to open the door because it's always unlocked on Wednesdays, and he runs into it, I think, and then he knocks. And I said, oh, hey, man, sorry, I forgot to text you. You didn't look on Facebook, did you? He said, no, what's up? You're not doing it tonight? And I said, no. <laughs> and, uh, and then he's like, he's got a bottle of booze. He's got like his thing of cigars. He's like, you want to have a drink and smoke? I'm like, not really, man. I'm kind of <laughs> checked out for the night. Walk back home. <laughs> I felt that. I think he had his tail between his legs on his way out. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, what do I do on Wednesdays now? Uh, so, yeah. Th- thank you guys for, for doing all that and uh, for, for staying tuned. Um, tonight we are going to do, instead of, we were going to do a Valentine's Day episode. Yeah. So now it's going to be, how was your Valentine? We got some. Uh, I've got some questions that I want to know from you two, okay. from the people in the audience. We're going to get to that. Oh. Tanya was nice enough to donate oh, yeah. to the podcast, contribute to the podcast. Whistle Pig Twelve Year, which is a ride, just like every other Whistle Pig, to my knowledge. Nate uh, found out some information on that, and then we have the Sublime Oscuro, which I love. This cigar, which is a newer cigar uh, made by AJ Fernandez. So, without further ado, and and if you guys are listening on the live feed. I would like to, Eric Goldhaber says, hi, I'm the audience. He has some questions he already submitted on our, our community page, which oh, I love. I'm sure he did. So, and they're good. <laughs> um, but I want to, like, if you guys are in the Facebook audience right now and you want to get some questions for the second half, we're going to try to kind of monitor those and make sure that we have those available for later. We'll scroll back. So I'm looking forward to it. That was a weak cork pop. That's all on the cork. Sure it is. That's what she said. Yeah. Anyways, we're good. I know it is. So you're pouring the Whistle Pig 12 year, correct? Yes. All right. So Nate, what do we know about this Whistle Pig? Uh, Tanya, how much did you pick this up for? It was like 125 and change. Yeah. So if anyone's familiar with Whistle Pig, they're not cheap. Uh, I know the state is doing four Whistle Pig barrel releases they just did the third one last month and they're all hundred dollars a bottle so definitely not cheap by any means uh this is the 12 year Mm -hmm. uh so it's aged in 
uh, oak barrels, and then they actually finish it in three different types of wine barrels. Yeah. And they actually on the bottle on the label, uh, the front, it actually tells you like what percentage of that maturation process is in which type of wine barrel. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. So it's got sixty three percent in the Madeira cask. Got to talk in that microphone there. I am there. so sorry. Last time Tanya was on is before we had this yeah, set up, so she's I'm, usually I'm just talking. Um, sixty three percent in a Madeira cask. Uh, wow, I'm gonna slaughter this one. Uh, thirty percent in a. Sauternes. Sauternes. Okay. And then seven um, percent in a port cask. So okay, that's that's what we're looking at as far as how it matured. Nate, what else do you know about this? Uh, yeah. Do you mind sharing with some of the studio audience? Do you do you mind? Sharing. Sure. Uh, <laughs> no wonder we have such a right. large studio audience today. Yeah, Take, some really samples, yeah, yeah. Take some samples. Yeah. That explains so much about what I'm looking at. Uh, but no, if, like if you go to Whistle Pig's site, uh, so, so this is eight, so again, like twelve year old rye. Uh, it's eighty six proof, so it's not all that hot. Um, and then they say we've taken the elements that are the most quintessential in an American rye: mm. boldness and character. And fuse them with the elegance and grace of an 18-year-old scotch. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how how much whistle pig uh, are you? You know, have you had Steve before? I know you had. I know you were gifted. That's very about good. Two thirds a bottle. Very of, good. Uh, the 15. Yeah. So I have the 15. I have not actually had any of that bottle. We're gonna. I've been saving it for an episode. Uh, I know Liz's stepdad did have a little bit uh, on Southie Day, which I, he said it was very good. I know Brad has talked about it, you know, who actually donated us uh, the bottle or gave it to me, which I'm excited about. And uh, geez, Dan's making me super Kylie nervous. definitely knows So her much glass. Kylie knows her wines. Um, what'd she say? The Sauternes, or however you pronounce it, Kylie. Sweet, Sweet white wine, wine cast. That's nice. Oh, okay. That explains a lot about the profile. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's. I need security in this garage. That's you. you. Do. Um, that's anyway. all you, all you Tanya. <laughs> so I, I haven't had many. To answer your question, I haven't had many whistle pigs. I'm excited to have it because I got to be honest. Other than when I am uh, gifted a bottle or gifted a glass, uh, sharing it with someone, I, I this is not something. 120 is a little bit out of my everyday mm. budget. <laughs> now I know there's a lot of listeners out there that are going to be able to, you know, I, I see some of the collections on the, the community page. I see some of the collections on other bourbon pages that we share too. So 120 or whatever is not necessarily out of the question for the, the people that have these these collections or that, that have the income. But for me, 120 is yeah. definitely up there. So well, it's not well, something that I'm going to stock at my bar all the time. I feel like I should say the reason that this was bought <laughs> for the podcast was because I was a giant eagle. And I was like, ooh, I'm going to be on the podcast. I should get a bottle. This would right. be great. And then I priced the Boss Hog. And it came back. She was like, oh, yeah, that'll be $599.99. And I went, oh, I am not that fancy. Right. And then she priced this for me. And that's probably the only reason it was palatable enough to like just pop a cork and be like, hey, yeah, it's whatever. classic sales. Uh, you start high and then just yeah. kind of chip away at it, which so, I like. So that's why we well, that's why we have this bottle is because she got me. Um, and I'm glad. She it's got nice. Uh, but, you again. yeah, there it is. So. Jake, we have Jake Sanders also, who uh, was part of this podcast for a very long time. He's still part of the community and community page and all that good stuff. Do you know much about Whistle Pig? You want to share some of your, you want to drop some knowledge bombs on us? Welcome back, by the way. Hey, yeah, Jake. thanks for having me on. Um, Watch so, that cord there, your yeah. tripod. All right. <laughs> it's nice to be a part of the audience. It's kind of cool. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. It's good to yeah, have you. So, uh, Whistle Pig... Um, Unfortunately, the whiskey community lost uh, the maker or the brainchild behind Whistle Pig last year named uh, Dave Pickerell. And uh, I was actually fortunate enough to meet Dave Pickerell's son. He came into Burn recently, few, obviously. Yeah, I mean, a you've few been weeks there for ago. A few months now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, very awesome. Not, I want to say kid because he's a man, but <laughs> his son. <laughs> Very right, awesome right, dude, right. Um, but we were talking about his dad and stuff, and Dave Pickerel was the brainchild again by uh, or for Whistle Pig, and um, he originally started at Maker's Mark um, and then kind of became a, 
if you will, a whiskey consultant for the nation and around the world and stuff like that. And he's done a lot of things with like Woodenville up in uh, Washington, state of Washington, stuff like that. And, yeah. Um, before he passed. But uh, Whistle Pig is, I think, what, Vermont, Nate? It's on the back of the bottle. Yeah. It I, is. Yeah. I believe it's Vermont. Yeah, yeah something like that. So. <laughs> Yeah, they. I mean, all their things that they do are rye. Um, I don't really know the history behind it, but I know that Dave was kind of, again, just the the brainchild behind the whole thing. He was a master blender. Um, he made amazing whiskeys. He knew how to blend whiskeys. Um, he did. He did a lot of different finishing with whiskeys and bourbons and ryes and stuff like that. And that that's what you know you see today with the Whistle Pig Twelve Year. Um, you know, the fact that it's got that Madeira cask in it and a lot of different other finishes and right. it, blending it all together and making it into a masterpiece. So, nice. um, and then you have the boss hog that is released every year for around $500 as you found out, Tanya. I so, did. so I mean, <laughs> so I, did. I mean, they're definitely killing it and people love them. So, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's all I know. I mean, they're, they're relatively new. So a lot of their stuff, as you know, you know, from what we've experienced in the past, is that a lot of their stuff at the beginning was sourced from, you you know you guys guessed it MGP so sure um, a lot of their high rye mash bills came from MGP and a lot of their old barrels that they had and stuff like that so yeah and they just took their barrels and then finished it in the Madeira cask and so on and so forth so it's it's pretty cool stuff and the fact that you know it's a relatively new brand of the whiskey world um, you know within the last probably five or six years or so it's 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 just taken off and it's taken the world by storm so. i'd never heard about it before probably a year and a half two years ago yeah yeah i mean it just in ohio didn't even start getting it until what about that time yeah yeah this, this is always one of the ones that you see behind the counter in the lock yeah <laughs> yeah because they're Keep 10 years because yeah. they're 10 years like 90 yeah. And then their 12 years, 125. And yeah. the 15 years, probably like 150, 160. I remember uh, there was a Saturday morning I went to Giant Eagle for one of their releases. And, uh, you know, they had uh, some Eagle Rare, some E.H. Taylor and stuff. And one of the boxes right on the top of the cart was a box of Whistle Pig 18. And nice. sometimes, th sometimes they uh, – trick your eyes and they just use yep. a box and have something else in it yep so someone in the line actually asked like oh what's in that whistle pig box and they goes whistle pig 18 that's the new 18 They're like oh how much is that four hundred dollars a bottom yeah. it's like yep and that's just gonna go right on the shelf next to the other case you have and it's on the a shelf. It, and it's a beautiful decanter they did a more yeah. of a decanter style thing where they have like a glass yeah. cork top and stuff Which like is, that and i think it's cool but i mean we got like rich back series because i really think they're starting to overprice and overvalue these new whiskeys i can get some great 18 year old scotch for around 125 i think that's a great point um it's carson good... deck says 15 years to 58 state retail i assume he's talking about ohio uh carson let me know if you're talking about something else but that's what we have in in the yeah. the kitchen there as well which we'll do another night yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Whistle Pig, I, I would say that it is very, very overpriced for, you know, what it is. But you know, when you're, com it's hard to compare scotches and Irish, and then you compare it with bourbons because where they age, the the climates are completely different. If I think you take, there might be a, a cost there for them too, being newer. Yeah, you know, as opposed to some a company that's been around for a very, very long time. They have their practices down. They have their 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 aging. Down, yeah. they have all this stuff. They're not gambling as much as maybe a newer one. You know, it's out there like a whistle pig. Well, then right. it goes to something that you said uh, last night at the shop, Steve. We were talking about you know how there are some places that will uh, gouge prices on certain bottles, right. certain mm -hmm. bottles that are harder to get. And you're like, well, if this bottle's normally you know a sixty dollar bottle, but as a retailer, let's say you pay forty dollars for the bottle as a retailer, but then you market it. Four hundred dollars, right? And you sit on it for a year. Well, shit, you just made ten times your money. Yeah. So you know something like this. Yes, they're very expensive. Are there a lot of people that are going to pull the trigger on it who've never tried it before? You're probably not going to get a whole lot of first timers. This is one maybe go to a bar and spend twenty dollars on a pour. Yeah. And try yeah. it. Uh, Treat yourself. But you know we we sit there and yeah. joke about the eighteen year old being four hundred dollars or the boss hog being. Six hundred dollars. Guess what? People buy it. Mm -hmm. People like it. People buy it. Not. It's not everyone's palate, but 
Well, and I think that's that going to buy it. This is the type two. I don't know what the production like production numbers are. Mm-hmm. I'd be interested to know about that because you have bars that have it. You see Whistle Pig, especially at high end ones. So when it hits, they get their bottle. They don't fly through it. You see it. At least in Ohio, I see it on the shelf. Different, you know, ten year, twelve year. Some of the other ones you see, like the you saw the Boss Hog. Mm-hmm. You see them on the shelf. They're not going anywhere very quickly. But again, depending on what the state or what the the store gets it for, depending on what state you're in, you are going to get your money back. It's just a higher end bottle. I mean, that that's the whole thing. Yeah. So you have a have some of it in there. You're sitting on it for a while, and it's it's not going to be a gouge price like a. Say what were we looking at on your overpriced bourbon, like a, a Eagle Rare that was like seventy nine dollars. Oh, uh, there was a uh, there was a place that was selling Weller Antique for one twenty. Jesus. Yeah. So I mean, those are those. That's where it gets out of, out of hand because you know you can get or it that way. Happy ten year for a grand. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan Jones says tax return. <laughs> Good point. I'm sure these fly off around March, April, that type of you know time of year. Yeah. What do you guys think of this? I've only had a couple sips here. So. I, I like it. I think there's a I think there's a sweetness to it that I wasn't expecting, even though it's you know aged in some sweeter casks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot, also a lot um, zestier than I had intended to have, but but that's zestier right. like just um, it's. Let me oh, hold on. So sorry. Yeah, the I'm actually looking at their site and they actually list. All right, here's what they say you should get on the nose, Heck, on well, the palate. Were you done? I was gonna wait. Were you done, Tana? <laughs> she had to take a sip, so I was trying to fill the air. I time wanted to. Uh, I'm sorry. I wanted to re. I wanted to rephrase. <laughs> you, Tana. Let's have look it there. at what the pros yeah, have to say. Let, you know, what? let's let's no. see what the the real people have to say. Um, no, it's zestier in that on the no on the front end. Yeah, there's a little like um a little bit of spice to it but it smooths out really quickly it really and does that's, absolutely i mean it's just gorgeous in that regard that's what i was gonna say and now i'm done what do the professionals say nate <laughs> nate what oh, do, do you, you need think to fill, do you need to fill air time now no, well, <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> now you know how this is gonna go um <laughs> No, you definitely get the the rye spice, but like you said, it it does smooth out very very quickly, and I think that's yeah. because of the different wine casks yeah. that they're maturing it in and blending together. Um, I get uh, a lot of uh, you know a little bit a lot of that oak on the back end on the finish, uh, but while it's on the palate, I get a lot of dark fruits. Uh, so like a, a plum or raisin type dark fruit. You saying that because Jake's in the audience or? No. Okay. <laughs> no, that. Just want to make sure. No, that'd be a Clement, that that'd be Clementine. That'd be Clementine. Clementines. Orange Gatorade. Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay. So you're getting deeper fruits. Yes. Yes. Like stone fruits. Yes. There you go. Well, like the one I got a couple weeks ago was uh, a peach at the very beginning, and then mm-hmm. just all cinnamon with that Stag Junior. See, and because Jake's in the garage, I'm going to say what I'm searching for. No, I'm just doing it. Cherry if you watch the episode, cherry do seltzer? This. It's not cherry seltzer, okay. but uh, there is. I would say I don't know. I don't. I think there's like a little like finish of there's like a little citrus like in the background there. Well, there's definitely a brightness. Yeah, and, that's what I'm. I'm yeah, getting. and that could be citrus. It could be something else. It might be the fact that it was finished in the white wine cask. Um, I'm but, surprised it has that much brightness. Yeah, given that it's a 12 year rye. It's super light. Yeah, like that's surpri- that's really what's surprising me. Just even most color, it's a little are, light. Yeah. yeah, but most rye's like have that little bit of like weight on your tongue, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and even not old rye's, just rye's in general, in my experience, and that one's just crisp and clean and light. Mm-hmm. That's the way that I. That's would actually a good it. way to yeah. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. And especially with being at eighty six proof, it's very yeah. easy to drink. Well, and that's dangerous, but I like it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's dangerous to have a hundred and thirty dollar bottle that's that easy to drink. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised, and and I don't want to go straight to it because I think it's it's just like the elephant in the room, though. It's at that cost. Yeah. First of all, it better be good. I mean, like, I mean, yeah. it better be overall. I, I feel like it shouldn't be one that everyone tries, and they're like, ah, it's all right. I don't really care for it. So right. I feel like we we do have a little bit of positive feedback on this. Yeah. It's it's. Is it's, it what you were expecting? If knowing someone paid one hundred twenty five dollars for no. it, so it's <laughs> it's. <laughs> Tanya would be the one to answer. That's Dana's the best disappointed? she paid for it. I'm not disappointed. No, 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 let me let me be clear. I'm not disappointed. However, I have drank 
what is it, $10 bottles of whiskey, and I have drank $125 bottles of right. whiskey. And I'll say, I wouldn't pay $125 for this bottle of whiskey again. I got so that $10 a, rye with me. It was so. a, one, a one-time purchase, what It you was saying? a one-time purchase. I will me. say it's very good. I would not be yeah. disappointed if I got a, I got a pour at, at a bar no. for, I mean... Again, if you're if you're spending the money, I'd assume this is going to be at bars or at least in Ohio. You're looking at uh, thirty bucks Seven, for a hundred twenty right? dollar yeah. bottle of, of bourbon or, yeah. or whiskey. Um, you're going to be spending about thirty dollars. It's very good. Yeah. Um, I think if you put a little water in it, which I'm going to do, which I'm kind of scared yeah. to do, going to did try you, to. you're going to try it. Yep. Um, I don't know what it's going to do to it. I I, I, I fear might, that might it will. I'm afraid. I fear that it will open it up too much and and water it down even with a little bit, which yeah. would be disappointing. I'm hoping that it actually opens it up and brings out more flavor. Yeah. Okay. Not that it doesn't have a lot of flavor now, but I'm hoping that it changes it to the point where you have a lot of flavor to it. Well, to your point, if you're, you know, out at a bar and you're going to, you know, you're dressed really nicely and you're in a treat yourself mood, getting a pour of this isn't going to be disappointing at all. Right. Um, you know, but like I said, I personally will not be buying another $125 bottle just uh to have um but it is light it's really crisp and clean it's really delicious yeah. um, it goes down really easily and you know i don't unlike with a couple other bourbons i've recently tried yeah. or whiskeys um i don't feel all my internal organs so that's nice <laughs> um oh, we were talking about know. that before depends the on the day <laughs> that depends on the day yeah. yeah well i don't want to feel them ever so <laughs> personal choice there no you're living um, you know, got to know who you are. For a while. Do you want to hear what Whistle Pig actually says on this? Mm-hmm. Sure. Nate, you're dying. Tell go, us what go, the professionals have ahead. to say. We're just amateurs. So just on the nose, <laughs> caramel, vanilla, and winter fruit. Okay. I don't right. know specifically what winter fruit supposed to be, but right. on the palate, rye spice. Mm-hmm. I think we all agreed on that one. Yeah. Apricot. I don't get that. Apricot. Plum, raisin, date. And honey. I get the honey. So there's the dark fruit that I'd mentioned earlier. Sure. Yeah. And the rye spice. Yeah. And then the finish, dark chocolate, caramel, vanilla, and winter fruit again. So the finish, they list the same thing as the nose, but add the dark chocolate. Chocolate? Really? Dark chocolate. I'm, you know, so, I'm sorry. Dark chocolate. Cause, my bad. Because milk chocolate you know, has, a, has a sweetness to it. A really dark chocolate has almost just a little bit of bitterness to it, but not, oh. a, not a bitterness that turns you off. Dark chocolate to me tastes like dirt, so I don't get that at all. Not a fan, um, I see. I, that's I why just I didn't added, get it for Valentine's Day. <clears throat> oh. yeah. I, I just uh, <laughs> did just a dash of water and what I had left in my glass, and yeah. it, it did. I get a little bit, um, not more heat, but almost um, I get more of a mint from it, Okay. truthfully. Um, I Yeah, I want to see what you think of that. I'm going to. I'm uh, it's funny. Uh, Rich, again, Rich backs. Johnny Walker Blue, about 150 at Costco in California. I don't know if that's where you're at, Rich. Our Costco's don't sell liquor. Well, I'm not. State of Ohio doesn't sell it for 150 either. So I mean, but he's saying oh. cost, cost wise, 120 or so, 130 versus 150. They're so different. I'll, I'll answer that, Rich. Is that they're so different that with Johnny Walker Blue, you're gonna. I feel like you need you you need to like smokiness. This is not. I mean, they are they're night and day different flavors. Johnny Walker Blue. So oh, yeah. Yeah. I would say, what do you? He says, what would you rather drink? Because they're close to the same cost, I would say you have to try both, and, and they're they're just totally different. Uh, I, in my opinion, Rich, they're they're on different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. It just depends on how it hits yeah. your palate. Like if you like crisp, clean, sweeter, like with a little bit of spice, this is going to be your jam. And if you like the other, like the heavier ended of things, then. The Johnny Walker Blue is the way to go. Yeah. Um, you just added water. What do you think? Okay. So what happened for me, and I only added just like a little. That's splashy, all you need. Yeah. A little splash. Absolutely. Splash. Um, it brought out way more of the rye zest for mm. me, um, and got rid of a lot of the sweetness and a lot of the mellowness. Even. I agree. I think that's why um, I was saying like a little bit like mint, some sort of mint. Yeah. There. Like, but at the end, it still does that crisp like. Yeah. Like. Not gum like feel, but like you know when you breathe in on a cold day, that crispness that's there. So that's what it did for me. It's a short, crisp finish. Yeah, it doesn't linger very long. No. Did you put water in yours yet? I I put just like not even half a cap. Okay. Yeah. And you think it did it change it? Did it not? Not a whole lot. I mean, it it okay. it did accentuate that rye a little bit more. Mm-hmm. 
But other than that, it 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 didn't do a whole lot else. It didn't weaken it as much as I thought it would. No, yeah. I think it, it, it got, it yeah, it got amped rid of up. The fruity. Like, I, yeah, I agree with you, Tanya. I think it, it amps up some of the other mm-hmm. more traditional rye characteristics. Yeah. Which is interesting. I, I, it's interesting with this. It's I, I look at this bottle at a, take the price out of it. If this is a rye, if it's thirty bucks, forty bucks, hundred twenty, whatever it is, mm. it's definitely different. That's what I'll, I'll give it. It is that. So it, it's unique compared to a lot of ryes. Very much. So true. it's it's worth trying if you you guys haven't had it. If you have the the means, or if you have the op- opportunity to, to have some, or have a glass at a bar or whatever, I don't think you'll be disappointed unless you are just of the mindset of. Is this worth the the cost? Is the value there? Or if you're drinking it objectively, mm-hmm. take cost out of it, which it's tough to do. But, I mean, if you take the cost out of it yeah. and you're just drinking this, hey, this is a 12-year rye. This is the breakdown. What do you think? Yeah. I'm of the opinion that that you're going to enjoy what you're drinking. Oh, yeah. For what it is. So, I would say that this would be the kind of bottle that I would go in with friends on. Yeah. So that the cost is, you know, is limited. And then you get to share with people that you enjoy drinking with. And it's a really smooth drink. It's really tasty. You know, if that takes cost pretty much out of it, really. You yeah. Know? And then, and then, yes, absolutely. I would, I would throw in on a bottle of Whistle Pig. There you go. Um, I would not add water to it, though, personally. You liked it originally. I loved the crisp, clean yeah. sweetness. It reminded me a lot of... Um, um, there. When I was little, and I have no idea what brand it was, but my mamma made uh, hot toddies with bourbon yeah. for us when we were kids, and that's what it reminded me of initially. Was just that like really sweet, like great bourbon taste that I fell in love with initially. So I'm which into I bet it. you was not a hundred twenty dollar bottle. It, of- I will. <laughs> I will, hot I will guarantee my mamma think? never spent a hundred twenty dollars on you don't bottle. Know. Maybe. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I believe that. I went to I went to Chicago. You've had years this in a Manhattan. Ago. Must be nice. Yeah, I went to Chicago a couple <laughs> of years ago, <laughs> and uh, I had a gift card, and I used uh, my expense account for dinner, but then used gift card for the yeah. bar, and I had the Whistle Pig ten year, and I had the twelve year, and when I drank the twelve year. At the time, you know, two years ago when I drank that, probably a little bit different than what this one is today. Sure. But at the time, I thought it was the best rye I'd ever had. Because at that time, I was not a big rye. Mm -hmm. You didn't have much to compare it to. I get that. I was not a big fan of rye, but I've tried more and more rye, and I do enjoy some of the better ones that are out there. Yeah. Or, you know, that $12 bottle of rye that I have. Mm, um, Tasty. Which is just absolutely amazing. But, uh, yeah, it's. You know, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. Yeah, but I th- I think the price point scares people away from trying it. It's yeah. not even a scare. I mean, it's not a scare tag. It's just it's facts. I mean, it's yeah. one hundred twenty dollars on something you may not have had is is a lot of money. I don't care really if you is. make a million dollars a year, you make you know uh, you know thirty five thousand dollars a year, whatever it is. It's it's an expensive bottle. I mean, this is where yeah. you your your price you're pricing yourself into a market that the competition there. Is either at this point they're getting more well known, but it's in a, it's in a well known price point that you you know what people think of it. Now you can look up reviews, you can listen to podcasts like this, which I appreciate. But uh, it, it's something that to spend north of a hundred dollars on a bottle, especially when it's it's not the secondary market, especially when it's a state controlled yeah. uh, liquor agency, that that's putting you in a, a risk, not necessarily a scare. I do want to mention that we have some people watching. Mark Jeremiah, if you're still watching, I saw you tuned in from Cuba. Thank you very much. You boys are killing the rum down there, which I'm proud of you. Um, And then we have Jonathan Herring watching as well, who was on the last episode with Laurel. So thank you, Jonathan, for the support as well. That was a great episode. Check it out if you haven't seen it. I kind of equate it to, in the cigar industry, if, say, a, a... a newer company or boutique company, you know, nothing real big or anything that had been around for a while. If they're coming out with a cigar that's in that twenty to thirty dollar price range, like yeah. there's not a lot of cigar smokers that are going to drop that kind of money on a cigar they've never tried before. And I'm gonna it, be, it's going to be word of mouth a lot of times. I think. What do you want to say, Tanya? I, I'm going to be real. A twenty or thirty dollar cigar has to buy me a drink first. I mean, a twenty or thirty dollar cigar has to buy me a drink first before it fucks me like that. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> just a lot of money. I don't know if you're smoking Damn. a cigar correctly or incorrectly. Apparently there, not. Based on that I don't. Statement. I don't know. I'm just saying, like that's 
That's a Whoa. that's a lot of money for a cigar. What? I just, twenty or thirty? Twenty or thirty? Yeah, and you know, and I'll say it's, I've had well, I've think had about really what you're getting up there with when you say that. Oh, that's yeah. true. Uh, Let her finish. Like the, Let her finish. So like the Padron anniversary, uh, or not anniversary, the Padron Siri nineteen twenty five, right? Twenty six. Twenty six. No. It's nineteen twenty six. It's nineteen twenty six. You you right. It is. Yes. You right. You right. Um, that one. Uh, that's a really great cigar. Yes. I loved it. Absolutely. Um, I will also say that. Paying that much money for a cigar kind of hurts. Um, paying $125 for a bottle of whiskey, that hurts uh, a little. But at the same time, like, when you're in a consumable hobby, right? Like, you really love, like, I really love whiskey. Mm-hmm. I really love cigars. Um, trying those things, you're going to absolutely have to have a word of mouth. Like, I have heard hand over fist people talk about Whistle Pig to the end of time they're just like whistle big is great it's amazing it's wonderful it's fabulous and then i uh, like the 1926 series like that fabulous it's wonderful it's amazing so you know i if i hadn't had that would i have went and spent that money on like this bottle no absolutely well, not i think the difference is there too i mean you you compare like smoking a padrone 64 you, you compare smoking this sublime Oscuro sure. to buying a a pour of this at a bar right so out of pocket the immediate it's not as heavy you're taking a gamble on this because again we've talked about it before yeah most people you buy a bottle where whether it's 35 dollars or it's 125 dollars a lot of the times and this is for the everyday type of consumer Mm -hmm. that bottle might last a year or two but you're buying it's like you buy a box of cigars right. where you, you haven't had it yet. Yeah. Same thing here with with a bottle of whiskey, you're 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 basically you're you're all in. I mean, you have it now. Yep. You can't take it back. You have one glass. I don't care for it, but I have to drink it or I'm going to impress my friends if I entertain. You buy one cigar, you don't like it, you spent 20 bucks, 30 bucks on it. You kind of regret it. You could have got three cigars you know you like or mm-hmm. something else, whatever. This is like I, I see it more like you're you're spending on a box of cigars or even like a five pack sampler on something you don't know if you like it, mm-hmm. and it's pricey. See, I've done that before. Though. Yeah, and what happens when I don't like that is I end up um, gifting. I I end up gifting like yeah. that's really what ends up happening. I'm just and that's like, fair, and you, you know, might do it with this. Uh, yeah, like uh, like this. I bought this to share. I did not buy this for my own personal stock. Um, you, you were talking when I brought it into the shop. You said, okay, we're going to cap it at, like, whatever level and, like, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Um, I I bought this with the intention of we could kill this bottle. It wouldn't hurt How are you me. feeling about it now? That's what we appreciate about you. Maybe a little want to have some of it. So you like it. it. I like it. So you I have like to like it. it, yeah. I actually like this bottle. Um, I am still pro-killing this bottle. Um, so you're torn she, here. She's gonna just gonna throw it out there. Well, I'm gonna um, finish this that I have with the. Yeah, I gotta too. say, gonna, with the water, I'm, I'm with you on this. Like, yeah. I like the first couple sips. However, now that I and I didn't have much in here, but after more sips of this with water, I, I it's not as enjoyable. So I'm gonna have. A, if you're all right with that, I'm gonna have a little bit more without water, and hopefully it'll it'll or just absolutely, go add well. more absolutely to what not. No, I'm not gonna no. do that because that's not that's <laughs> defeating the purpose. <laughs> You you don't understand Jesus. the equation. No, no. <laughs> I want zero water in this. Yeah, okay. same. Like zero. <laughs> All right. So the cigar on the flip side yeah. of this, this is a a more I would say I don't say budget friendly, mm-hmm. but Sublime's Oscuro. So we sell it uh, for this size. This is Robusto. This is a soft box press. This is a newer edition. It's about that eight to nine dollar mark on our shelf in Ohio. I've seen it for cheaper. Um, only because sometimes Sublimes will have an aggressive sale as a wholesale. Yeah. So you'll see it for a little bit cheaper. Not much, but I've seen it for, for less money. But at the even at eight eight to nine dollars, this cigar, I say it holds up. This one is it was it, a company started in I think twenty eleven and it was a small, small company. That's why it says on there, um, fine boutique brand cigars. They just had the Rosado, which was the original, to my knowledge. We love the cigar. We used to carry it years ago. We finally brought it back because it kind of slowed down for us. But I know Brian, uh, the owner of Tinderbox at Easton, one of our sponsors, he's always loved it. Mm -hmm. They got production. From my understanding, when their production got too heavy for them to be able to use where they were using the factory, AJ Fernandez picked up production of it. Okay. And so that's who's behind at least the 
not necessarily the blending as much, but mm-hmm. the, he's using his tobaccos, he's mm-hmm. using his factories, and he's able to produce more for them. Okay. It's very interesting, though, for me with this Sublimes is that when you look it up online, it, other than knowing that it's an obscure wrapper, and from my knowledge, Nicaraguan filler and binder, it, it doesn't say much. Like, you cannot, like, it just is still all, even on their website, they they very there's very little mention of this Oscuro blend. Mm-hmm. It's going to be mostly the, the Rosado, which was the original. So it's almost like they put this out, and it's it's not, I don't know if it's not a focus for them with this this business, but they are not pushing it out there. I see very little, if any, reviews on the Oscuro blend. It's all the Rosado. I don't know. I like the fact that it's called the Oscuro Blend and it's obscured online. Like it's fair. You know, wordplay <laughs> word makes me happy. Which um, do, you, do we all know? I mean, Oscuro for everyone at home. I know the wordplay. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> but Oscuro is going to be more aimed towards that that wrapper leaf shade. Right. So um, when you look at that, for those that are more in the bourbon or they're just getting into the cigars, with this, the Oscuro is is typically going to mean almost black or black. Um, as opposed to being like a Maduro, which is more commonly used, that can be, you know, you, you get to that Colorado, which is that medium brown. You get to the Maduro, it's going to be more of a dark brown. And this is one is closer to black. It's yeah. closer to black. I mean, it is a, a dark wrapper on this mm-hmm. one. And the risotto that they use, I think, is a risotto oscuro, but they don't really publicize that as much okay. because it's a darker risotto wrapper for sure. Much like, I mean, yeah. plug for the BS Silver. It is about that shade. And some of the BS Silver uh, risotto oscuro wrappers, the Nicaraguan, um, are darker than others just because of the natural color sorting. I was going to say, I really love a lot of the tobacco that's coming out of Nicaragua. Yeah, um, it's definitely so my it's favorite. Just, it's hands down one of my favorites, the Nicaraguan tobacco. Um, I really like the pepper that's on this, like mm-hmm. especially when I retrohale, because yeah. um, I have a tendency to do that so that I can get as much flavor out of it as possible. Um, and it, But it's not aggressively peppery. Like... They're like the the BS Silver. The BS Silver, when you retrohale that, that is fairly aggressive. But Very in, peppery, in a, yeah. in, a, in a good no, way. Like I really love it, but it's uh, that's one of my favorite cigars. Thank you. Um, but and I'm not saying that just because I'm in your podcast. It Thank legitimately you. is. I don't care why uh, you're saying it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, but <laughs> I, I've bought so many. Compliment of them. accepted. I've I've bought so many of them. Like my wallet like supports that. Um, yeah, I appreciate but, the charity. But you know, I do what I can. Um. <laughs> But I really like that it's not aggressively peppery. Uh, it because this is so light and crisp when you don't put water with it. Yeah. Um, when you are just drinking it, it doesn't overpower. It balances, and that is something I really look for when yeah. I'm smoking a cigar. Yeah. Because I'm like probably like eighty percent of the time when I'm not at work, um, I'm like I'm I'm drinking a little something with my cigar. Um, right. Because I don't drink coffee. Some people do. Like, that's uh, amazing for you who do. Um, but Coffee's a great pairing with a lot of cigars. Yeah, it. I, I've heard that. Uh, I just hate the taste of coffee. I make it about two shades darker than my skin tone, and you can see me. So, uh, I, I like... Interesting description. You know. A lot of cream uh, and sugar. I basically, yeah, I basically have some cream with some coffee. Right. No big deal. Um, some coffee with that creamer? Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Um, but... When I'm drinking a whiskey or I'm drinking a bourbon with my cigar, I want it to balance. I don't want either sure. one to overpower. Yeah. And I also typically smoke a bit heavier, mm-hmm. uh, medium to full. I typically really enjoy pepper. Um, I like aggressive cigars. Um, and this one is just that line. It walks it really nicely for me. I'm, and this is, gonna, this is not what they'd put in the brochure. But when I'm doing this with a retrohale, with what we're drinking, there is a slightly, and this is going to sound like one of those really like artsy oh my God, reviews. I know you hate it. I mean, I you love, love them. it because I, I never them. do this. Yes, I, I yes, I'm here, here we are. Is it orange ah, Gatorade? Is it orange it Gatorade? Is. Tell me it's orange Gatorade. It's not. No, it's not even that. I think it's, so it's more food flavors. But again, I, I am getting a, like, if you had, all right, so if you had a, a slightly over, like, little burnt toast. With pepper. Okay, okay, so you're so you're having a stroke. Okay, that's what I'm You don't get I'm that at all? <laughs> no, I, do, I don't get burnt toast. Cause it's I, not burnt toast. Slightly burnt toast. There's right. like a bread bread to it, but with pepper. Let me... Hold on. Let just me, think let about me, it. Take a puff of that. Yeah, no, I'm going to. I'm just... Are, let are that you talking sink in. just on the palate? No, yeah. Well, what I mean, like on the retro as well. Okay. 
Because I had a I had a cigar over the like weekend. a rye toast. I'm proud. I I I don't get how much toast I don't, do you I don't, eat? I don't, I don't get I, a lot. Uh, I don't eat any carbs look, anymore, look, so maybe I'm, I'm gonna off say here. look at look at me. I look like I eat carbs. Um, Easy. a lot of them. Um, and I do. Uh, but what I'm saying, <laughs> all the carbs, uh, all of them, please. Yes, potatoes. Um, hand toast apparently, but I I don't get burnt toast. I do get a, I mean maybe a little bit of a char. Maybe, um, and it could just be because you said that. Uh, honestly, probably is. Like I'm gonna be honest. You're welcome. Like, you, have more you. puffs. You're gonna thank be you. thinking. Thank you. I'm gonna be like burnt, burnt rye toast. toast. Like burnt here, rye toast. here we are. Uh, burnt toast. No, for burnt me, rye toast. Get, for me, it's more like uh, some of the coffees that I drink. Because uh, I like black coffee. Mm. I don't add a little bitterness. Not. Not necessarily. And again, these are these are terms that most of the time people would think are like negatives, but um, no, no, yeah. not necess- not necessarily bitterness. Um, I mean, so when I drink coffee, I I don't drink you know Folgers or Maxwell House. Don't uh, sound uppity. Wow, what? you are pretentious no, as fuck. No, no, Jesus. No, my wife, my lovely wife. She's uh, wonderful, by the way. Let me just saint. put that on yeah, on record. Yeah, go on. my league. Um, Agreed. No, over a year. Jesus. Over a year ago, uh, she got me a uh, subscription to Black Rifle Coffee Company. So, oh my God, yes! So every month I get a different bag of coffee, and you know some are lighter roast, some are heavier roast, and this is like one of those darker roast coffees that I get from them. It just very rich, very deep, um, not necessarily a burnt flavor, just a very heavy flavor uh, you know i definitely get that spice on the retrohale don't get a whole lot of spice on the palate but definitely on the retrohale mm. uh, it's just enjoyable it's very very enjoyable this is one of my favorite cigars in the shop in terms of that you know medium to full body range yeah. so this is one of my favorites ryan gallimore has been on the podcast before folgers is the best part of waking up that is apparently a fact by the way if you've never seen that commercial <laughs> I want to tell Tanya. I want to give you a little Tanya. This is this is yeah. how I started drinking black coffee, right? So you say okay. you you drink. I, uh, this story was um, mm. this was an experience. That, I told you this story, Nate. I think before about why I started drinking coffee black. I don't think you did. Okay, right. well, I'm really excited. So I and maybe that's why I like the like I I don't mind the end of a pot a lot of the times. You know what I mean? Like it's oh, a little like bit of that the, little the, tar, yeah. you know, like kind of oil sludge. But uh, do you ever do French press? Yeah, yeah. First time oh. I had that was actually my, that Miami trip when we were doing the BS stuff. It was okay. really good because that's how I do my coffee every morning. Get that okay. thick. Okay. So no, this if is I, if I do if I do espresso, that's how I do. It was a, it was See, with I think the that's French bitter. press. There's a little bitterness and I to that. I love right? that, uh, okay. but I like to add a lot of cream and sugar. So there's that. So I didn't like coffee at the old job. You know, they would have like the you know the two o'clock pot or three o'clock pot. You know what yeah. I mean? And I got offered that all the time. So I was like, all right, finally I need to like, need to grow up. I'm like you know 25, 26 ish. So, you know, I, I go to the kitchen, they have the coffee. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'm going to choke this down. I'm going to fit in with the, you know, the coffee group at the office. Um, mm-hmm. So I did the same thing. I put, you know, cream and sugar in there because yeah. everyone was kind of doing it or whatever. So You're then, a follower. Gotcha. well, I just, it, it tasted better, right? So, yeah, you know, no, I, I was, I was drinking like four or five Mountain Dews a day oh, back God. then. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I don't do that. I'm highly caffeinated for the last so 39 years. But, um, so I go down, we go visit, this is my ex, right? So we go visit, we go visit my, uh, my ex's dad and, and stepmom and they're offering coffee. And I was like, Oh yeah, yeah I'll take a cup, you know, yeah. again, trying to fit in. I still wasn't a big fan, but I'm there with my, sure. at the time, my future father-in-law, later my father-in-law, now ex-father-in-law. But it was one of those <laughs> things where, there might um, be a reason. Who knows? I said, Hey, do you have any, uh, cream and sugar? And he is, he, he worked at AK steel for. 20 oh, yeah. oh, some yeah. years, right? Oh, so that was offensive. Gotcha. Yeah. No, it wasn't offensive, but this is this is the dad comment back at, at, while I'm visiting. And he says, uh, you know, we don't drink it with cream and sugar around here, but I think there's some milk in the fridge. And it was one of those things <laughs> that like 26, 27 years old, I was like, I opened the fridge and looked. I was like, I'm not going to do this. And so yeah. I had yeah. black oh. coffee and I drank yeah. it black ever since. Hmm. So, I, so, so you were like peer pressured, shamed into drinking. Not black peer coffee. pressure. It was more of a question of manhood. Oh, okay. Yeah, See, that's that's higher than peer pressure. I'm gonna, honestly. I'm gonna be real. I'm never gonna have my manhood question. You don't know that. Um, 
No, pretty sure. If I have my manhood question, I'll be like, yeah, you're right. You a better man than I am. Um, 100%. Now, it's a low bar, but you barely fucking tripped over. I know plenty of men that are not better men than you. But, oh, well, that, thank you. That's so <laughs> sweet, Steve. I know. I mean, like, I know. Mm, no big deal. Um, to those of you watching. <laughs> yeah, it was, inter- it was interesting. That, that kind of reminds me, uh, so where I, uh, where I used to live at, I made good friends with a guy who owned a coffee shop across the street, mm-hmm. and he actually was doing a special event because he got a pound of Kopi Luwak. So the shit coffee. Yes. Okay. okay. That's yeah. Anyone who's ever seen Bucket List, yeah. The shit uh, coffee. That was a cigar too, by the way. Best cup of coffee I've ever had in my life. There's no bitterness to it whatsoever. Tons of flavor. Absolutely fantastic. But the guy in front of me and. For those of you who don't know, like Kopi Luwak is typically around four hundred dollars a pound. Jesus, it's yeah. the most expensive coffee in the world, and like a cup of it's like twenty five dollars. And thankfully, because I was friends with this guy and doing the event, all I did was I trade him a few cigars. Yeah, and got to have some amazing coffee. The guy in front of me added cream and sugar to it before he tried it, and I, me and the owner just looked at him and just wanted. to Deck him in the face so bad. Well, that's the same thing yeah. when it comes. To, that's the same thing that comes with whiskey when you have something like this, and, yeah, and people exactly. add water, they want it on the rocks, and it's like it's. It, you, we've talked about it though. You, it's yours now. Yeah. Do whatever the fuck you want. Enough. Right. Order it how you like. However, I will say, Give like with with yeah with coffee with with bourbon with whiskey, um, order it neat uh, or you know without cream and sugar. Try it, which I've always done. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've always thought mm, that needs a lot of cream, a lot of sugar. <laughs> um. That's personal palate. Uh, and then with my whiskey, I'm like, oh, I'm lazy. Yeah, I'm going to just drink that. Um, I got to say, though, this... It's so much better without the water. Yeah. So much. You knew where I was going with this. Yeah. This, this I had the second pour. I mean, same. So, again, we're drinking the Whistle Pig 12-year, and mm-hmm. uh, it is definitely more enjoyable, especially with this cigar. Exactly. Now I'm halfway without through. Without the water? Without, yeah, without the water. Without the water. Yeah. With without the water, so I mean, and I'm about getting to the band of this uh, robusto, which is I want to say five, maybe five and a quarter, uh, but uh, it is definitely I'm losing because because we're getting into it now, and I'm on my second glass. I'm, I'm halfway through the cigar. I'm losing a little bit of the pepper in the retro hail. Are you? I don't know if it's if it's if, like if the 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 cigar is changing a little bit, which I love. But I don't get as much. You're still getting a lot. I'm, I, well, no, I, I never got a whole okay. lot. Um, I'm still getting the same amount. Um, I will say it definitely, definitely balances better without the water because I did with water, you know, because yeah. I, I like to try, I like to try whiskeys. With I think water it went south with it. the water. Yeah, it did, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Nate, you, you didn't seem to have a super big opinion on that. It, it I got more of the rye flavor. Yeah, I, I think. It brought out more of the rye spice, so it's subdued some of that sweetness. Uh, I think you lose, when you add water to it, I think you lose some of what makes this bottle special in that it's aged yeah. in wine casks. I think you yeah. lose a little bit of that when you some, add the water. Some of the subtleties, yeah. what yeah. you're saying, yeah. yeah. But, I can see that. Yeah, So, but with the pepper of this cigar, it, it stayed similar for me. Sure. Um, it's not like the BS Silver Rubito. No. It's more like if you smoke the the big boy silver. I go to have a on the table bit. here, yeah. You know, ah. So the the big boy silver, it still has some of the pepper, just not as much as if you smoke that Rubito because it's so much more concentrated in that Rubito. Yeah, uh, it I'm, is. You know, it was a couple weeks ago we were hanging out at the shop and I smoked one of the Rubitos and I hadn't had one of the silver Rubitos in probably a month or two. Sure. And the first retro hail, I was like, holy cow, I forgot how much pepper this has oh. in it. I knew it's a pepper bomb. I forgot how much. Mm. Well, uh, with this... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. No, I, with this, it's it's interesting because it's almost like I had two different whiskeys with the water and without. And uh, this cigar, I think, really does hold up to both. It, it, which we've talked about yeah. before is that when you're smoking a cigar, it's it's interesting. Or you're having a glass of whiskey... When you have it with, when you're doing the pairings, but it's fun to smoke a cigar. And actually, we've done some episodes where we're doing multiple bottles, and we're having like a gla- like a small pour of this, a small pour of that, and you can see that cigar actually change a little bit when you're pairing those with different things. So it's tough to have that honest from start to finish with a cigar when you're changing what you're you're pairing it with. In my opinion, 
I I would agree. Um, I would say for like the, of course, I I finished my last little bit of the with water because I was like, oh, I don't like this, so I'm gonna swallow it really quickly, and yeah. then I'm gonna have what I like. Um, and that's what I do when I have a whiskey that I right. don't necessarily enjoy. I'm just gonna basically shoot it a little bit, which is for a hundred twenty five dollar a bottle. Like you Jesus earned it, Christ. You paid um, for it. I paid for it, so I can shoot it if I want. Um, God, that hurts. Uh, but I will say. This has withstood both, like you said, um, but I'll say it pairs better with the Whistle Pig 12 Year Rye um, without water, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, it's, I agree completely. Yeah, it's so good. This It's way. a lot of flavor, both of these. Yeah. So I'm going to say this on the cigar. Let's let's focus on the cigar here briefly here yeah. before we, we, we shift gears. Again, what do you guys think as far as have you have you both had this cigar? You both smoked it many times. No, so, no. I, Tanya, this is, no. This is my first. All right, so Tanya, you're more you know pure when it comes into the, the yeah. smoking this as a review. Yeah. Where are we at on your about? You took the band off. You're halfway through. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little more. Yeah. Um, construction. What do you think for everyone listening out there? If you're looking at the Sublimes, if you want to take advantage of the 15 percent off at our sponsor, Tinderbox at Easton, or if you have a local uh, brick and mortar, you're online, yeah. whatever. If you can find it online, this this Oscuro again. This is the Oscuro. Not the risotto, but what are your right. takes on construction? Uh, with that includes draw, wrapper, yeah. everything else. What do you? What's your take on flavor? Has it changed? Because you're you're getting to that mm-hmm. point where you're you're over halfway through it. So I would say that the flavor hasn't changed. It's been very consistent for me, okay. and I really love a good consistent cigar. Um, I don't want to have to smoke halfway through a cigar to get to like the good part. Right. Um. So this is really amazing in that sense. The construction is it's good. Uh, the ash is a little loose. Um, but like if you're ashing regularly, not even a not even a concern. Yeah. Uh, which I do, uh, because I don't like to ash on myself. I usually wear a not lot many people of, like to ash yeah. on themselves. I, well, I yeah. wear a lot of black, so that's a problem mm-hmm. with me. Mm-hmm. But it's it's tasty, and for the price range that it's in, like it's fabulous in I my agree opinion. Completely like on it's that. it's good. It pairs with whiskey really well um i assume it would pair really well with coffee um as not a coffee drinker i can't really personally speak to that but i can say that it would it would more than likely pair with whatever you're drinking um this would be something that i could have a gumball with and i would still get all of that which right. by the way i Explain chew gumball that. okay so a lot of the times at the shop I take advantage of the fact that there's a gumball machine. Um, I probably spend more money in gumballs than I do in cigars. Uh, um, it's maybe balanced, uh, but I you, I eat a, a lot the of highest it's a, highest profit item in our shop. Actually, I was going to say I I I Marginal, have a lot yeah. I have a lot of gumballs. Um, but I will say that this would withstand that. It would withstand whatever. Um, it's a really great cigar, and I would highly recommend. Coming in, taking advantage of this deal, like it's a yeah. good cigar. Um, that's that's my opinion. Uh, as having not had it before, this is something I would purchase. So that is good. I, I I'm, yeah, uh, which is a raving review, which I, I agree completely. This is this is pretty stout flavor. I mean, this is this is. Mm-hmm. You know, you're smoking a cigar with this one. This is not. I mean, this is this is bold flavor. Oh yeah, uh, Ryan Gallimore. He, this is interesting because of what we were all talking about, right? Interesting fact: Edison. Served soup to everyone he interviewed. Anyone who added salt and pepper before trying the soup were never offered a job. How do you know what it needs if you haven't seen what's missing? I agree with that. It's very 100%. interesting. It's interesting because with Jake being in the garage, it was something that he was a, a big proponent, and a lot of people are nowadays in the, the, the whiskey industry, industry and, and enthusiasts, that they want to do barrel proof. Mm-hmm. But then that was one of the things that Jake always said was that you know he likes it barrel proof so that he can, in a sense, in, in a metaphor here, Add salt and pepper to it if he th- he wants to change it. If you want to prove it down, you add a little bit of water. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I, I like that. That's actually a good parallel there as far as what we're doing here, because adding that that uh, salt and pepper when you're drinking whiskeys, I will say this, or you're smoking a cigar, try it on a fresh palate. Yep. Try it when you've had different foods. Try it at different times of the day. Don't make your judgment based on that. Not talking about necessarily that scenario. Mm-hmm. But it's the same thing with whiskeys, in my opinion, is that if someone pours you that, start with neat and get the rocks on the side. Get the water on the side so that you can try it the way that they bottled it, what they thought it should taste like, Mm -hmm. and then do it. I feel like you might be selling yourself short if basically you do it, you smoke a cigar one time, and that's it. 
or if you try a whiskey and you're like, I'll take it on the rocks. Yeah. Unless you just know that, again, you can do whatever you want, but I, I think that's a cool point because when we're talking about this every week, I think that's something that when you're doing this, get it neat, get the rocks on the side if you like it on the rocks typically because then you can add one ice cube. Mm-hmm. You want to add another one, whatever, whatever you want to do. You can always add more. There's you some can bars, never add less. There's some bars that I know that will not. If someone asks for it on the rocks, they will absolutely pour you it, give you a glass like this, and then put the rocks in a glass on the side, and I like that. Yeah, no, isn't, I like that. Isn't that what Amy said she was doing with uh, some of her stuff? or like that? Amy would do that, that yeah. That Weller, yeah. 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 proof that she got. Yeah. 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 Well, and I'll I'll say this. Um, I've had what was it? Uh, Basil Hayden Rye. I yeah. had Basil Hayden Rye during the middle of summer at a tasting event. The in dark the, rye in or the, the Caribbean the, Reserve. The dark rye yeah. in the blazing sun. Okay, and I was like, this is trash. I hate it. Okay, and then I had it during the winter, mm-hmm. and completely changed my opinion on it. It is one of my favorites. I think ryes are always better yeah. when it's below fifty. I agree. Um, but I, Except but I had never, I had never, I had never had that experience before. I would never thought my mood, my, like what I'd eaten that day, whatever, like that might influence what my palate is, uh, is feeling. Um, and that makes me always try a cigar twice. It makes like me that. always try a whiskey twice. Um, I now like am I lot. necessarily going to try a whole bottle? No, I'm, I'm not, but that's that's going to change that um it also gives me the opinion that like everyone says a first opinion is a lasting opinion on people right so well, like, on anything really like, right, but it is I mean, right you shake that first so opinion, that yeah. first opinion like it's there but like it always in the back of my head is one of those things that always kind of resonates mm-hmm. that maybe maybe it was just me uh, maybe like whatever, whatever I was going through, like whatever that moment was, maybe that's what colored that situation. Okay. So I always try things twice at least. That's good. Uh, but so. to your point earlier, and yeah. I'll, you know, again, I'll, your point earlier, it's, 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 if you're buying a, a $120 bottle, if you're buying a $20 cigar, right. you may, that's, you have, it's a one and done because Absolutely. of the price. You're not going to be like, Hey, you know, I do, I, I. This this cigar, oh. this bottle de- deserves the justice of trying it again. Yeah, not yeah. always. Not if always. I, if I had tried, if I had honestly, if I had had this and I had put water with it, and that had been the only way that I had tried it, I would have said, "Never again." Never, absolutely. Never again. Like I wouldn't throw in on this. There's no no way, no mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Having it neat, like I, and luckily I'm lazy, so that's a thing. Um, it's good that, that you know yourself. Well, you got to know yourself. That's um, right. But yeah, luck- luckily I did that because this is absolutely delicious. Um, like I said, I wouldn't spend $125 on it alone, but I would throw in. It, I would go to a bar. I would pay. I would pay $20 a pour for this. Okay, that's good. Um, so you know. So as we're rounding out part one here, yeah. right? So so. Nate, review on both of these. Summary, what are you thinking? I know we kind of covered it, but people that are tuning in live on the Facebook feed, which we do every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. for about two-ish hours, sometimes more, depending on the pours. And it's funny, someone said, Rich said, you guys must have a nice buzz given how much of that whiskey you've killed off. Now, we did share some of it with the audience. We have a very large studio. We got one, two, three, four, five. We got about six, six, seven people out there. Fairly large. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Nate, what do you think? So, in terms of the cigar. Yeah. Uh, in, t- in that mild, to, or I'm sorry, that medium to full body range, this is one of my favorites in the shop. All right. I absolutely love the cigar. Typically, it's one I smoke later on in the night. I'm one of those that typically starts more on the milder side yeah. with my Jennings Java and then go fuller throughout the day. Uh, Saturday, I'm actually thinking about smoking this first cigar out of the gate out with the a rip. cup of coffee. Ooh, I'd like see, that, how yeah. it, see how it pairs with that. Jennings Java yeah. that you yep. get at Fado's. Yep. Uh, but I, I absolutely love this cigar. I've never had any issues with the burn, with the construction, mm. with the draw. And I love the fact that when I take a draw on it, I get this big cloud of thick white smoke. Okay. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's one of the characteristics I look for in a cigar. Is that, out of cause, 10. Because that uh, nine. Yeah. Nine out of 10. I, I would agree Based on that. overall. Overall, this, yeah. yeah. I'll this, get to you, Sam. Yeah. Um, I'll get to you. And then, and then the whiskey, the whistle pig, twelve year, uh, not what I was expecting. Really? Because, like I said, I'd had it a couple of years ago, but that was the only time I'd ever had it. Yeah. 
Um, and it was great when I had it twelve year or two years ago. This still very very good. Uh, you know, I got it. You know, I bought that shot when uh, I had a gift card. Yep. We, yep. So, yeah. you know, would I spend now. twenty to thirty dollars on a pour? Mm-hmm. Having had a bottle of, you know, part of a bottle of it, um, <laughs> no. Would really? I, would I spend one hundred and twenty five dollars on my own bottle? No. Okay. Mm. Um, just because I know what I can get. Mm. So, like one right. of the, the ride that I have in my bag, I can get ten bottles of it for the. You're same big cost. on the budget ones, which I can Not appreciate. Always, so, but so all right. So out of ten. What are you, Everything what are you considered, this? like I mean, like I'm, I'm yeah. looking at this. We're getting into you know year three. I is, think this is something we should do. Is, I think this is something where you know you have that breakdown. And everyone looks at the magazines, right? And that's why I'm doing this. Is yeah. that you look at the magazines and you see the rating, right? And it's like a out of a hundred, right? So let's let's do the math. Let's condense it a little bit here. Let's do the fraction. But it's it's if you had price value, um, you have the the taste. Everything considered, out of ten, Whistle Pig twelve for you, Nate. With the price. Overall, with the price six, without the price eight. Okay, Tanya, cigar. Okay. Where are we at? So I would I would agree with Nate. The cigar nine. Like it's got a good construction. The draw is fabulous. The amount of smoke I'm getting from it really really good. Um, it like there's nothing bad that I have to say about this cigar. Um, which so why is it not a ten? Why is it not a 10? Because, uh, honestly, I'm reserving my 10 for, like, that moment where I have a cigar that ruins me for other cigars. Okay. Um, and this is not one of those. I like it. Um, I've had a 10 cigar, in my opinion, and but uh, yeah, uh, maybe two in my okay. lifetime. Yeah, and I, I've yet to have a 10 cigar, like a true 10, like a wow. So this is top of your yeah, list here. This, but is, this, this is, top, this is this up is there. A, this is one that I would put in my regular rotation, mm. and that really says something because there's only about five in there right now. Okay. Um, then this adds like a six. So this is going to be a nine, um, like now you the said. Wh- whistle Pig 12. The Whistle Pig 12. Uh, so I definitely paid $125 for this bottle. Fact. Uh, facts. Facts. Uh, but – what I will say is I would throw in on this bottle. I would pay for this at a bar if I were feeling fancy. Okay. Um, but normally, like every day, would I would I buy Whistle Pig like just at like if I were at Fado's and I were like, Oh, I wanna I wanna pour of whiskey. N- yeah. No, okay. I I wouldn't do that. Um, this is a special occasion kind of situation for me. Um, it's tasty. It's really delicious, but it's also not something I want to drink every day because of the price. Okay, so price keeps coming into this, yeah. obviously, which yeah. is interesting. If I if I were to take if I were absolutely to take price out of it, which I can't do, but if I were to do that, then yeah, it would be something that I would have occasionally. Okay. Um, that would be my opinion. So that's yeah. Obviously, the cigar is 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 I don't want to say winning, but I mean, there's definitely a raving review with with the cigar for me, Sublime's. Uh, Oscuro, I think this is a, a killer cigar. I think that you know the price point again. You can't you can't negate that. That's the value side of it, and I think you guys are hitting that more on the whistle pig side of it. Um, but that's the the flip side of it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. where like Nate is is. If you guys have watched episodes or listened to episodes with Nate on there. It, it's it's he is a budget guy. Yeah, appreciates the more expensive ones if he likes them, but he is a a. I'm not oversimplifying Nate, but like you are the king in, in, in my social circle of finding killer budget bottles, which is, is awesome because that is bang for your buck. You get a good bottle of whiskey for whatever reason. It's, it's less expensive, whether it's because of the, the cost involved for the, for the distiller, whether it's the state, whether it's whatever the step yeah. is there. But if you can find a killer bottle, just like a killer cigar for a lower price, you're winning, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with the Sublimes, I'm going to give it an eight, not just to be different, but I think yeah. it's good. Yeah. Um, I think the draw is very good. I've had some, like you look at this one, it's still drawing well, but you got a little bit of a, a the hole there. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, it happens in any cigar, no matter what the price. Yeah. I will say this is an eight only because I think when I've smoked it before, tonight doing the back and forth with the water and the whistle pig, I've had a little bit of, a, of an evolution as you, you smoke it. You know, it's changed a little bit. Sure. But I will agree with you guys normally. When I get this cigar, it is fairly straightforward. It builds just slightly. Mm-hmm. Eight out of ten, I definitely recommend it. Yeah. Whistle Pig Twelve. I I would give it probably a, a, a seven, six or seven. I think it's different. I th- I'm interested to try more Whistle Pigs. Yeah. And that's I'm, I'm excited to try now that it's been open, but I'm excited to try the fifteen 
I Ooh. thought about doing like a taste comparison between yeah. the two, but there's not enough in that bottle. I want to do it for a separate episode, unfortunately. And again, if that's if that's pushing two hundred dollars, it's that thing where I don't want. I'd rather. I think it'd be better suited there's for the for pocket. The three of us. I think it'd be better Dang. suited for the podcast. Big picture that we can have it on another night and we can focus yeah. on that one um, with a different cigar. But uh, yeah. it'd be good to do a controlled experiment on that one. No. So with a whistle pick, I'll give it like a seven. I think it's very unique. I think it's very good. I think, uh, again, without the water, it's definitely, it's a, it's a straight. And with the proof, it makes sense, right? You yeah. don't, I mean, it's what, 80, what do we say? 86. 86 proof. Yeah. So 86 proof, you don't necessarily typically need to add water. If you guys like it with ice, you like to put a little water in it, definitely yeah. start without and then go from there because I think this one does have, everything we talked about tonight is, is still holding true on this glass without water. So I, I'd say 7 out of 10, which... You know, again, I know when you're doing the reviews and the magazines and all that stuff, it's like if you got a 70, no one's going to touch it. But I think this is more of a practical type of a, of a scale here. So yeah. it's an overall thing. So, uh, guys, if you guys can find the Sublimes Oscuro nearby or if you grab some, definitely check it out. Obviously, I got an 8, two nines out of 10. Fantastic cigar, especially for the price. We're talking about the value is, is killer. AJ Fernandez seems to not be able to do anything wrong right now, which is awesome. Um, with the, the, the whiskey whistle pig, check it out. We've talked about it, how to try it. Maybe not go all in on a bottle. If you're yeah. not making a million dollars a year, it's just smart. Uh, but I would say, uh, the, the sublimes Oscuro 15% off tinderbox at Easton. Thank you tinderbox at Easton for sponsoring us and, and, and providing that discount. I hope people take advantage of that this week. And I also want to thank all to this. I'm about to light up for, for part two. Mm-hmm. The Reserve Romeo Julieta, which I love. This is the Tubo Rothschild. So if you guys are listening to the audio only, check out part two. We'll probably mention a little bit about the cigar. But we've smoked it before on the podcast, and it's always been a favorite. So I also want to thank BS Cigar Company. Exciting things to come going forward. I'm working on some new swag for that as well, You know, because it's boring just to do one thing in life, apparently. So we're going to have some new BS swag as well as podcast swag. Uh, trying to build that relationship there so everyone can take advantage of that. Uh, I want to thank everyone to for tuning in to part one. Part two is, again, going to be how was your Valentine? So Oof. those of you that are watching on the Facebook Live, and I'll mention this to the audio if you want to click over to part two, 106.2, this is where we kind of differentiate ourselves from other podcasts, which you like it or you don't like it, you can tune in, tune out, whatever you want to do. But this is where we are going to kind of go into more of the life topic. Yeah. And this is, to Rich Back's uh, point, we've had a few bourbons in us or a few whiskeys in us at this point. So it'll be, a, a, a I hope, a good conversation. So after the fact, we're going to be talking about Valentine's Day. Guys, thank you very much for part one. If you're on Facebook Live, stay tuned in. Share it, all that stuff. Guys, review, like it, subscribe, all that stuff. It helps it grow. And uh, thanks to our sponsors. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. It's a good clink. All right, so for those of you on Facebook, we just stopped the audio side of it. This is where we go a little bit longer than some of the podcasts, but uh, we appreciate you guys staying tuned. If you guys are just relaxing on this Wednesday night, wherever you're at. Hi, Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Dustin Bovey in the, the house here. Um, I got Jamie Hurst t- <laughs> tuning in right now. Jamie Hurst. I want to share this. Excuse me, guys, from throwing up over here. Um, Jamie, <laughs> Jamie Hurst is, uh, is the manager over at Fido Irish Pub and Restaurant. I regret to, to say that I was not able to go on a barrel pick this week because of changes at the shop, but um, I'm hoping to go on a barrel pick with those guys. I hope they had a great time. Fido is in Columbus, Ohio, both the Dublin and the Columbus Easton one. They've got, they just worked on an Elijah Craig barrel pick again, so that's something to check out. For sure. I know Kaysen from the Dublin one also is working on a Weller full proof, which we had a full proof Weller from Amy at McClellan's, yeah. which I still have that sign behind Nate because she forgot it that night and I have not yet returned it. It looks great in the garage, but I, I will have to return it. I assume my problem returning that is that when I go over to McClellan's pub, gonna I know it's going to cost me money. Yeah, it's going to cost me money <laughs> to return this sign because I'm going to go over there and be like, what do you have? And she's going to be like, I have 500 bottles. I'm like, God damn it. I should Uber back. Can you drive my car home? She does know what she was doing. I agree. She's fabulous. Fabulous. Um, I've got some questions for for part two. Does anyone need a a restroom break? I'm good. Good. You're good? Good. Can you turn the eye rig just a little bit? So I'm going to share topic time here. Oof. 
Just, no, the, the eye rig on the. You on want the to raise the door a little bit? Yeah, turn the fan on. That'd be fine. You may Go ahead and crack it a little bit more. Jake, it's good to have you back in the garage. Yeah. This isn't the burn lounge. It's a garage, all right? So, <laughs> fucking bougie over here. <laughs> for, for the, uh, listen, there's a little, there's a little smoke. Sorry, it's sweetheart. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, for, yeah, for those who, for those who I'll, can't tell, you know, there maybe. is a thick cloud of smoke. Cause there's, you can't see it on camera. It doesn't exist. Yeah, there's about 10 people Picture in the garage in total. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to share this. Keep talking. Keep talking. Yeah. Yo, no, you like that yeah. cigar, Shannon? I, I told Shannon, you. Shannon, what are you smoking there? He's, yeah. he's smoking that CLE Azabak. Oh. Nice. Which I That's absolutely tasty. love. No, tasty. Uh, this is mine. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's an absolutely fantastic cigar. I, I, I love that one. Um, so, you, what are you smoking? You coming to the 10 event? All right, so 10 event, if you like that cigar. Hold on, hold on. You're going to attempt it? Well, you got to remember, though, Shannon Shannon just had a career change. He just passed the state board. Listen to the episode that uh, Shannon Chapman was on. It was a killer episode. Yeah, he he just got his license to be a barber in the state of Ohio. So uh, he's just starting that career out. So he's going to. You you enjoying it? You enjoying it? Good. Glad. Glad. Uh, So. For those that we didn't actually say that, I, I feel bad that we didn't say this uh, leading into the first part. Um, but for everyone listening and watching right now, live, what are you smoking and drinking? Yeah, uh, not not the the guys in the garage. We know what you guys are smoking and drinking. Um, but for those but for those of you on the the live feed, what are you smoking and drinking right now? Uh, yeah, hmm. was it rich or whatever? Uh, Rich Bax, yeah. Yeah, he was talking yep. about some of the stuff that he's had and comparing price yeah. and whatever. I'd be curious, you know, what he's drinking right now. Oliana? Um, Ooh. I know Eric's not drinking anything. It's good. Except maybe water, so. Because <laughs> <laughs> Eric doesn't drink. So no. He doesn't drink alcohol. And, so. or, or anything with, like, calories. So this <laughs> is a time. I just shared it topic time here. Um, as I'm getting ready to cut this, and then we'll get into the actual topic time. Mm. I'm actually kind of excited because I've shown just a, a few people, but uh, so the first round, for those of you that are, are fans of the podcast, um, for those of you that are already uh, patrons on the Patreon page, you will be getting your your your, your thank you gift. Um, I get a gift? Awesome. You do. <laughs> I'm going to need some shirt sizes from everyone on the Patreon page. We'll have some also available. Uh, it is based off the prototype that, uh, the first one is based off the prototype that uh, Jake and I worked on. So Jake's going to get one as well, obviously. Um, and our designer, Larry Schumann, is going get, to uh, get one as well. But this is something I'm excited about. Um, it's going to be that gray shirt. That's what won. So part of the community page is mm-hmm. that I, I've been able to put some stuff out there. So for those watching on Facebook that are more active on Facebook, this is something that I hope to get more involved in with and, and more involvement from that uh it'll be the podcast logo it'll be the the mm-hmm. saying i had on the front um from the first one i've also worked with larry our, our designer on uh a secondary logo which i'm excited about so it's going to be something that Love i that think logo. would look good yeah, nate's seen logo. it tanya's seen it i think it'll look good on on shirts hats things like that but uh it's going to be more Less podcast, even though it's all based on that, but it's more just bourbon and BS. So, hoping you guys like it. I'll release that very, very soon, um, and, and we'll see where we can go throughout the year. And I'm looking at some more like waves of, of stuff. Low it's not something set. that I'm going to be buying. Just so you guys know, I'm not going to buy like a hundred shirts, mm. have them sit in my 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 basement until people want them and ship them out. It's not like that. So we're going to do some stuff here, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. So I want to thank the Patreon patrons. And anyone that wants to get involved in that, I, I hope you guys do because yeah. it's been fun. Also, we're going to do some meetups. My goal here, long term, do some meetups around Columbus, Ohio. Uh, hit some some bars. We can even do, if anyone wants to host, we can do something like that. But I like the bar thing because we can go and try some cocktails. We can try some whiskeys. Uh, the first one I, I'm going to have at, uh, I think, Fado Irish Pub. It's it's our neighbor. Yeah. But with that one, I've got uh, one of our community members, Jake Smock, actually is... So he won a keg party that oh, wow. we can oh, use. Shit, son. So I know we're mostly <laughs> bourbon. For those who are listening right now on the Facebook page, this is something that the first one, anyone coming, basically we have a keg of beer as well. 
that if you're a part of the Bourbon BS podcast community, you will be able to get, you know, so you can bring someone as well that may not be into bourbon, but they'll get a beer and it's a good beer. And then also they have got the cocktails or barrel picks and all that stuff. So yeah. I'm excited about that. But my long term goal is, is that even if I can't be there and, and, and you're in different parts. So like Jake being in Indianapolis, I want to grow the Bourbon and BS community page in Indianapolis. We have people listening from all over. We had someone Oklahoma. Oklahoma for the first that's time. Wow. That's the that's first amazing. time. That's amazing. So I wanna I, I would I would hope that this community grows just so you guys from 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 my heart. Yeah, Burn would be a great one to do it at. But from my heart is that I want to see this type of community grow, hopefully that we'll have some meetups almost not necessarily chapters but different meetups that we can kind of organize in different areas of the country if you guys want to do it because I'll start it off by doing what we're doing, you know, here in Columbus and try to publish it show what we're doing and all that stuff and and hopefully you guys take cue on that so let's jump into uh part two here okay um I'm hey. gonna, hang on go ahead uh, no uh hill jack hill jack can you can you hand me a beer i want to <laughs> i want to have something other than bourbon to to sip on because like i need a sipper <laughs> Man, he, it, let, he left yeah, and he opens my some drinks of the air out, some of the smoke out Sorry. And you're drinking Steve's favorite. This is. You're more than welcome to have one, by the way. That's fine. Of course. We'll, we'll take. We'll take. We'll get it later. We'll get it later. All right, I'll everyone, calm down. Act like one. you've been here before, Tanya. I have been. All right. <laughs> Once. Well, not I, this I garage. A, I need a cutter and a lighter. Well, there you go. You got it. Here. All right. I, like, Let's roll. Give it to me. Yep. Rob Wilson's watching. Ooh. Yay. Hey, Rob. Hi, Rob. You ready? Yep. Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast. This is episode 106. Part two, this is where we get more into the life topic. I'm actually interested on this one, and I will say anyone watching on the Facebook page right now, so we do live every week on Wednesdays, if you have questions for the panel, for the garage, for anyone else listening right now um, on that and in the feed, put the questions out there. Hopefully we'll be able to field some of those, but I've got some questions as well for this type of episode. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors. So for part two, you know, again, same sponsors, Tinderbox at Easton. We smoked and reviewed. If you guys are listening to the audio only and you haven't listened to uh, part one, we reviewed the Sublimes Oscuro, which is going to be 15%. That's one five percent off uh, at Tinderbox at Easton through the next podcast. So Wednesday of next week, it'll be available. So if you're listening to this and you're going back several months or whatever, obviously it's not still on special, but it will be on special it's 15% off right now going forward. That's Sublimes Oscuro or Rosado. Also, I just lit up the Romeo Julieta Reserve, which is from Altidus USA. They're a sponsor. They have uh, done a, a year sponsorship, which I'm excited about. So we're going to have those on as well. Hopefully we'll get Josh on, a couple other people from the company uh, as well throughout the year. So I'm excited about that. Also, BS Cigar Company, we've got exciting things coming up uh, in March. I think we're going to land some some of the golds back in and the silvers. Yes, Tanya. I'm sorry. Not I was going to introduce you oh, to the please, part two. Please, but please introduce we me. We have some special guests, and one of them really wants to talk right now. We have uh, Tanya Priest on. Um, she, again, she donated for part one, the Whistle Pig 12. So mm-hmm. listen to that review as well and what we talked about there. So go back. If you're on the Facebook Live right now, if you're watching YouTube and you scrubbed ahead, Listen to that. If you're listening to the audio, go back to part one. You'll hear us talk about that. Tanya, what is so on your what mind? I, what, I, what is on my mind is the fact that I wanted to kind of plug something that I'm doing. Go that's ahead. Cool. Yeah, now um, I'm going to plug something yeah, I'm now, doing as well. Now, now I'm going to do that. Um, so at my shop, I'm a manager of Barclays Pipe and Tobacco over on... Um, yeah, I'm, I forgot about that. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, We're we, getting we to totally, this point. We totally, we totally spaced. Um, I blame so, you. You blame me, Jesus. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the whistle pig. Um, So I am a manager of a shop and uh, Barclays Pipe and Tobacco. And we are having a um, a women's night, uh, ladies' night. And men are welcome. uh, But we're having... You say so condescending. Yeah, I mean, you know, guys, you can come. No, please come. Please. Absolutely. Everyone, please come to this night. Um, It is partially hosted by Nat Sherman. Yeah, um, that's the, Kylie. That's the Kylie's sponsor. gonna Kylie's gonna come. Yep. Um. So we're having it from six to nine p.m. on the twenty eighth of February. So we're really looking forward to it. Please come to my event. Um. I would highly, highly recommend it. Um. You're gonna get. There is going to be a mimosa bar. Um. There's going to be 
Mimosa cigar, with the girls. Cigar, I love it. Cigar special. My favorite I mean, Sunday brunch. You know? What day is um, this again? It is the 28th Friday. of February on Friday. Night. F- Friday night from 6 to 9. I Friday night brunch. It. Yep. I, I mean, love you know. It. You'll be able to make it, Steve. All, all I I'm actually saying, might go. All I'm saying. If I'm welcome. I mean, you're welcome. That's so condescending. Still, no. it's wow. So- how how's that feel for you? I don't care to like uh, to like how how's that change work for you? Um, no, so it's gonna be good. It's uh, gonna there be was amazing. a question: Will there be food? Yeah, uh, there'll, be, says, there'll be there'll be there'll be cocktails. Na- there'll be nashi food. Uh, I don't know that shrimp cocktails on the menu. Um, Full seafood Bravo's platters. Ugh, wow, <laughs> we're we're going there. Oh, okay. Kylie, if you're still listening. Wow, we right. went there. So um, I would encourage everyone to check it out. If you guys are yeah. in the Columbus area, uh, that Friday night, the 28th. Eight. Barclays on West Lane. So it's so. Lane, yeah. So Barclays is a shop that's been around for a very long time. And you guys Almost are 40 years. Yeah, if you're around the Columbus area, if you guys have not checked it out, it's, it's just changed uh, hands as far as ownership and now management with Tanya. So uh, I'm excited about that. I need to go over there and check it out. I am so bad because I'm always, I feel like I'm always at, at our shop. Yeah. So, I mean, we've had guests like yourself now. Yeah. Uh, we've had Q on. We've had some other people on. And I just, I'm, I want to get out and you about. Know, and Nate's been. Nate's been. I, wa- yeah. I, I want to have, you know, again, this is about the community here. So yeah. we've had people ask, actually, is there a, a conflict of, of being on the podcast if you're part of another shop? Absolutely not. No. It's a very supportive community. So right. definitely check that out. I also want to plug something that's coming up shortly thereafter. I'm really excited. Smoking Tent event. If you guys are listening yes. to this now or you're listening to the audio side, Smoking Tent event number eight, 2020 is coming up. Uh, that is March 15th. It's a Sunday. The VIPs are sold out, but the general admission is still available for the time being. So the general admission is $130 plus tax. You will be able to meet uh, Kylie, obviously, from Nat Sherman as well. But also we're going to have Rocky Patel there himself. We're going to have Christian Aroa from CLE and Aroa Cigars. We're going to have Eric Espinosa from Espinosa Cigars, who's been on the podcast. We will have um, was, Alec, Alec from uh, Alec Bradley. We're going to have Ricky yeah. Rodriguez on Miguel, as well. Who's been on a couple Miguel's times. been on the podcast before. So this is where you're going to get cigars. Now you're going to get at least 11 cigars with a general admission. You're going to have a killer uh, lunch buffet. You're going to have lamb, crab cakes, jerk wings, among other things. Cash bar. We have a focus on some, some great, great whiskeys along with other drinks. Uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, we have Pat Byrne coming on the podcast. He just launched his first Irish whiskey to the United States, and he owns Burns Pub here in uh, Columbus, Ohio. It's in Grandview area, but we're going to have Bua on, and we're going to be it just, I mean, it just released. It's at two liquor stores in Ohio Amazing. so far, but he's got a lot more coming. So I'm excited about that, and we're going to focus on that for the VIPs, and it's going to be available for the general mission as well. So guys, check that out. Call the Tinderbox at Easton, one of our sponsors. Or, uh, you know, again, stop in if you're in the area and grab your spot. It, we sell out at 300 every year. It's fantastic. So, all right. So, we're going to go ahead and get in. Nate, do you, um, Nate's still here. I'm sorry we didn't, we didn't get that. <laughs> Tanya was so excited to I'm plug so her event. I think it's excited that, or exciting that you're doing that event. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I actually think my wife is going to drop me off the shop to work that night. And then come to your event. I'm so excited. I love Jess. Even though even though my wife's not really a cigar smoker. No, like I, she I love still her. wants to be there. Yeah. She's fabulous and I appreciate that deeply. Yeah. So all right, let's let's start this. So the, the topic tonight, and again, I'll be very interested. Uh, Rob Wilson says thanks, Steve. He'll be there too. Yeah, Rob Wilson will be there too. He's been on the podcast. Rob, you're fantastic. <laughs> I want to get you back on the Rocky podcast. Rob, yeah, Rob, he's Rob, is, Rob is fabulous. Let's, right. let's face it: when there's Rob Wilson or Rocky Patel, which one's going to draw more? I should throw that out there, on, like on Instagram, at least on a story, not like a feature <laughs> thing, <laughs> like a, and just like say, a poll. Also attend, no, just also attending <laughs> the one and only Rob Wilson with like a glamour shot of him. I'll oh put, my like, gosh, Do you, like, like seahorses like around like, no, him, like, you know, like, 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 like the like the eighty the eighties glamour. Rob shot. Wilson, this is what I want yes. from you: is I need a picture of you with you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, you lose um, a lot of heat in the neck. Yeah, <laughs> glamour shots. Um, so. I want to ask you guys, right? So, how was your Valentine's Day? Last week it was supposed to be yeah. a Valentine's Day episode, right? It was. So, let's start this off with Okay. How was your Valentine's Day? Nate, how was your Valentine's Day? I like day? how you deflected that. <laughs> oh, me first. And Rob yeah. Wilson, yes with hair. Um, so Valentine's Day fell on a Friday. Correct. Which for me means after I got off work at my day job. Yeah. Went to work at Tinderbox. You did. And so I was there all night. 
Uh, my wife was at Easton all night yep. as well. She usually comes to the That's shop. Romantic. And, and then she she'll does. walk around. Um, actually, when I first got to Easton, so Valentine's Day is also uh, my mom and stepdad's anniversary. Right. Mm-hmm. So they were actually having dinner at Easton. And so I actually walked over to the restaurant that they were having dinner at and wished them a happy anniversary, um, which was kind of tough. Um, I'm not going to get into it, but <clears throat> you can share that when you want. Yeah, They're, yeah, you're, you're, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so found out last month that uh, my stepfather, who I've known him for many, many years, long, so – my mom and stepdad have been married for 21 years, but I've known him since I was about seven, eight years okay. old. Um, he was the pastor at the first church I ever grew up in. Uh, actually baptized me and my father at mm-hmm. the same service. Nice. Um, so I've known him for the majority of my life. Found out a month ago that he's got terminal cancer. Yeah. Um, and because of how fast and how widespread it is, like treatment's not going to do anything, so he's not doing any treatment. And he's had health battles before this. Yeah, yeah. That, so sorry, about you know, so that was a little tough, you know, knowing that there's a good chance it might be the last one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it didn't help the fact that my wife, again, who's amazing, she had planned a, a Christmas present for him for this year, mm-hmm. and when she found out this was yeah. going on, actually had that Christmas present pushed up in production, and it just so happened to arrive at their house on Valentine's Day. That's awesome. Jess and is amazing. She is. You <laughs> married up. I, I definitely married up. There you um, go. So, uh, you know, so it was it was a little tough from that sense, mm-hmm. um, you know, because of family. Uh, but I was working at the shop. My wife is not one really. My wife forgets our anniversary. And she doesn't really care about Valentine's Day. Okay. It's, yeah. it's just another day on the calendar. Right. She, She's mm-hmm. more impressed if I go out and I buy her flowers on, on a Tuesday. A, on a on a Tuesday in May or right. whatever. Like Valentine's Day she doesn't get caught up in you know all the hype and all the commercialization of it. Okay. Right. Um, That's going to lead into and uh, our conversation a little bit here. Yeah. So so Valentine's Day for me was working from mm. you know 7:30 in the morning at my regular job until I got off at Right. Okay. Tinderbox till at ten thirty at night. Yeah. <laughs> and then went home and was like, "All right, shower." But bed, you had a you had a, ch- you had a chance to go over. I know to to wish yeah. them a happy anniversary, which yes. I think is probably you know when I'm looking from the outside in, I think that's that's really really important. Yeah. And I think that I mean I don't want to uh, uh, take it to this level completely, but I mean obviously there's there's no hiding. I think that's a memory that I think everyone's gonna yeah you know involved is gonna really really cherish. I think mm-hmm. that was something that was really nice of you to do. Yeah, um, and I think it's something that. nice for you to do for yourself as well. But mm-hmm. I think your mom, your stepdad really appreciate that. I think that's something that, yeah. uh, you know, I think that having that anniversary dinner and you showing up kind of as a, as a surprise, yeah. I think that's something that, uh, you're going to hold really, really, really dear to you for, for a long time. And, and I think you, it says a lot about you, mm-hmm. which I, I was, like, I was super proud when, so I, we saw each other on Valentine's Day. I was, I wait, was, wait, 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 su- hold on, hold on. I was, I was <laughs> Remember, super, I was working. Yeah, I was working. working. Uh, I, I popped into the Tinderbox, no big deal. Um, but I was super proud to be your friend when you told me that you had that opportunity. Like that, that was a really big deal. And that's really beautiful that you, you had that moment. That is so nice. I'm really, I'm really proud of you. So I'll, real proud quick before we get to Tanya, uh, Cheers to you. Cheers, yeah. Your family, your Absolutely. stepdad. I mean, we got some love coming across the feet as well. There you go, bub. There we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <clears throat> All right. Tanya. Me. <laughs> thank, I am. And thank you for sharing, Nate. Yeah, that, that's thanks. That's not easy. Thank no, you. No. You're... All right. Great guy. Tanya, your Valentine's Day. <laughs> My Valentine's Day. Wow. Um. So I've gone on record as to saying I think it's forced romance day, and I... Would rather stab my own eyes out with rusty nails than go out to dinner. Check out last year's Valentine's, <laughs> Valentine's Day, Day episode. This, one of the reasons I, I'm happy to have Tanya on here is yeah. because she was on last year's. Uh, it was episode two the first time, so we had just started off, and no. I know I drank way too much. No, yeah, episode two, and then you came on year two Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, year year two Valentine's Day. Um, I will I will say I'm not the biggest fan of that day. Um, 
And I recently started dating someone. Um, so much and has changed. I will. Year. I will also. I will also say. I still think it's forced about va- forced romance day. Like okay. it's. It's some bullshit. So um, what did you do? How was your Valentine's so Day? I'm going to stay. Try, I'm gonna stay, okay, try gonna, to stay in control of this conversation. Oh, good, good. This is good. funny. Yeah, okay. So how was your um, Valentine's Day? My, I gotta keep, I'm going to no, go through these questions. No, my Valentine's Day was amazing. Um, the man that I'm seeing, he went out of his way to make it special in a way that resonated with me. Okay. Um, we had a very low-key kind of Valentine's Day. Um we went and watched uh, Birds of Prey, uh, which is not a movie that he was interested in seeing at all. Sacrifice. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, he he was like, oh, it's going to be too uh, feminist for me. Like, is that how he deal. talks? That's exactly how he talks. Uh, you've heard him. Like, you know. Like, there you go. <laughs> I don't know how um, you guys talk to each other. No, that, right? that's, that's just how he talks. Um, okay. He talks to me like he talks to everybody else. It's fair. Um, same tone, everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but it was good. Uh, we did that, and then we stopped by the shop, yep. had a cigar, yep. um, then popped over to Fido's, had dinner. Well, we popped over to Fido's to order our dinner, ended up having a couple of drinks, and then popped over to the shop to eat the dinner that they provided to right, us. Right, right. Um, <laughs> and it was good stuff. I got to talk to Jess during that time. Uh, we talked about... What our significant others would put us as far as weight goes. That was beautiful. Um, that is it was a great, a great Valentine's Day topic. Sounds romantic. Like, like how how fat do you think I am? Okay. Um, right. Pretty sure my wife brought that up. She right. did. She she, ha- she just had a physical last week, no, so she brought that. Two hundred percent brought it up, and I was like, I wonder. Let's see what happens. Um, am I going to be offended? Probably because Nate's already called me fat. Um, Never said let's that. Let's okay. Go with okay. It. Let's so, continue on. So my Valentine's Day went like that, and then we went back to my apartment, had another couple of drinks, and then okay. I went to bed. Um, it was great. <laughs> yada yada yada. Yada went to yada bed. yada. Went, yeah. No, it was it was a really good. Yada yada yada. I'm it was sure. a really good thing. Um, he brought he brought me flowers after I got off work and a card. Um. He nice. made a point to ask me what was important to me. So knowing. So wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. So yeah. Explain that real quick. I, I think so, that's something I want to yeah. grab on. I don't want to um, know about the yada yada yada. I want to know. Sure. When you say that he asked you yeah. what was important to you, like he just no that came co- up in conversation. A couple, a couple of days before Valentine's Day, he asked me what was important to me about Valentine's Day. Like, was it important that he got flowers? Was yeah. it important that he got? A card was it important that he brought like candy or a gift like whatever Which some um, some people guys or girls would would be offended by exactly uh me on the other hand i really admired that because it gave him a clear understanding of what i expected nice and managing expectations in my opinion is the key to a happy relationship well, like he's that. lucky in the uh, fact that you were that open. That's true. Um, I was also smart enough not to say, oh, no, no not to say, oh, no, uh, you don't have to do anything. Because if I had said that, he would have done literally jack shit. Plus, you don't um, talk like that again. Like, if I, whatever you do again. is fine. Yeah, whatever whatever you decide is cool. No, I think no. that's one of the reasons you guys probably get along though also. You know what yeah, I mean? We're Eric both... Goldhaber says funny how communication helps. I, yeah, guess... weird weird how yeah. that works. Um but that's I, I told him, I was like, Look, I really would like to have a bouquet of my favorite flowers. Not because it's Valentine's Day, just because I enjoy my favorite flowers. But there's a reason there. I mean, like there's like, there's because, a calendar. Because... Like it's a because not a reason but be, well no because you're already thinking of me you thought of me enough to ask the question mm-hmm, okay mm-hmm. so it wouldn't be like forced for you to get me the flowers like it's just a this is what i would like right. i would like you to make this point cool like um it. and then he, i also said i would enjoy it if you you know got a card and wrote something nice inside of it yep like whatever whatever something nice it means to you like whatever that means like that's what okay. i want, he, I, want he, I want you he, to think and he did that yeah um, so what he, did he do <laughs> he got besides me my, the flowers right okay i was going to say he got me my, a bouquet of my favorite flowers which is um, which is alastromeria um which are i don't even know what that means is it what language which are, is that? uh that's flower language by the way yeah, um it's also probably. yeah uh it is peruvian lilies um 
Why don't you say which, that? Which, by the way, <laughs> if you go to a florist and say, I want Peruvian lilies, they look at you like you're stupid. Um, you no. have to say Elastromeria. I don't. Um, and, well, you don't, but that's what happens. That word has um, too many syllable, syllables for us guys? Exactly. So, um, what else? What and, else? Then, and then he got me the card that I said was important. Uh, he went to the children's section. <laughs> <laughs> he Sounds got me a, so was it more of a humorous card than romantic? He, he got or? me a card that uh, folds out into a uh, miniature Dotson, um, oh, which yep. I love. Yep. Um, and it had stickers, which I'll say, good job. Who doesn't like uh, stickers? Who doesn't like stickers? Uh, and then he wrote some really, uh, well... Sappy fu- words. He, no, 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 he fucked up with the writing, but it's fine. <laughs> two um, out of three is not bad. I'm yeah, not saying, exactly. you know? Meatloaf, meat, meatloaf had it right. Like, two out of three ain't bad. Um, Yeah, no, he he didn't write the right thing. And 100% that was, effort, though, 100%. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I give him, him, I 100% give him the effort. Right. Uh, and then he also made a point of showing up to my shop Yep. On Valentine's Day, which is out of his way completely, okay. um, to have a cigar with me. I like it. At my shop. I like it. Right? And then met me at my apartment to take me to the movie that I requested. And then this is like five made a out point. Of six now. Made I mean, a point. No, I know. No, he is. He is. He did a. He did an amazing yeah. job. Like he's in the Kobe, bonus. Um, Any foul is going to get yeah, him in the free throw I, I line. I made that joke. Um, he right. did that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he he did an amazing job. Uh, and then we had like There's the most so low events. key, the low key Valentine's Day that I had hoped for. Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. So things are off to a good start. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, it's it's amazing to hear. Yeah. Because if you go back and listen to I know last year's episode, I, know. Which, I encourage everyone to do so. Which up until recently, for the longest, for almost a year, that episode was our highest watched episode. That's right. Okay, like I'm. All right. So that's Agreed. amazing. Stupid. It's amazing. Agreed. Yeah. No, you're you're good. Um, I do I do want to say there's a couple comment easy. All right. Just on my phone. I want to say I want to share before I share my side of it, and I want to get to the questions, you know, because you know, mm. we we only have we're burning daylight here. <laughs> um, Bobby Hirschman, we we have dinner out several times a year. They are all special. Don't need a holiday to make it special, which Agreed. I like. Yeah. Now he also went back. Let me see where he's at here. My wife and I had pizza and watched the Joker for Valentine's, and it was perfect. Yeah. Not everyone's Valentine's Day, but that's that's what I like about that. And I'm going to say that that I like that, you know, with you, Tanya, uh, with you, Nate, with Bobby out there, uh, a couple other people that are that are doing this, uh, you know, that are that are chiming in. That's and Eric said it. The communication is best. So you want to you want to do that. And I think that that is. Yeah. And I'm not going to say what <laughs> Eric just said. He said, rate the boyfriend out of 10, like the cigar. We'll get there maybe towards <laughs> the end after more drinks. Ugh. All right. So. <laughs> I, I like later. that. So I'm going to share mine. And it was it was nice. Um, this, you know, Liz and I, we, we couldn't do a Valentine's Day because you guys are d- doing your thing. You know what I mean? Like she was working. In fact, I saw you and Dan in there at Fado, uh yeah. when I stopped in to visit her after work. But so we did the Thursday, the 13th. And I, and I agree with a lot of people. I, I'm not really big on on the holidays as far as that goes. I, I always struggle a little bit on what to get someone. But. I'm also I, I I want to use it, and I, I've said this before. If you go back to the the first one, episode two, you look at the last one Tanya was on. Yeah, I I don't really care for it a whole lot, but at the same time, I'd like to do something. So instead of doing something like super expensive or anything like that, uh, I did. Uh, we went out to dinner, yeah. um, and we went to a small. Italian restaurant that I, it was a guy in, in Westerville, which is a suburb of Columbus, Ohio. I will plug this restaurant, Cardoni's, oh, and wow. uh, so we went in on, on the 13th. And what I would say is so it's so interesting because I will recommend to everyone out there that if you're going out, it, it, I would do it on the 13th or 15th. Don't do it on the 14th. That's one of the things. Everyone I talked to, for the most part, on the 14th that that went out, there was there was something that didn't go right. It was slow. It was the the food wasn't as good as it normally is the drinks weren't coming out whatever it was we went on the 13th we went to cardoni's and we walked in there and it's it, i think the occupancy max occupancy is like 30 people mm-hmm. it's very very small right yeah. yeah cute place cozy whatever but we walked in there and i you know i was telling people about it and they were all just like looking at me like sounds amazing where is this place at yeah. we went in on thursday the 13th 
And I said, yeah, uh, we have a 730 reservation. She's like, oh, we have you set up over there. And when I'm hearing from other people that, you know, they're like, yeah, we, we waited for water. We waited for our server. We didn't know if we had a server. I was like, they, she says, oh, you're set up right over there in the corner booth. Uh, your waters are there. Like the waters were sitting in there. The menus were there, all that stuff. I mean, it's like this is not normal normally, but on Valentine's Day yep. season. So we sat down. We, we, you know, she brought over a, a bottle of wine when we ordered it. But while we were asking that, Liz says, hey, do you have uh, any bread? Um, you know, we haven't had much to eat. She's like, oh, it's being baked for you right now. <laughs> so, I mean, awesome. it's like, yeah, like, yeah. everyone else was like, holy shit, like, that's that's a real thing. Same thing. It, it's cooked from scratch. It was a great place. Cardoni's in Westerville. Yeah. We had a great time. I didn't ask for anything special. It just, that's how we were treated. Mm-hmm. And there was, like, two other couples or two other parties there. But I said, are you guys booked tomorrow night? She says, I think we have, like, a two-top available at, like, 930 at night, and we close at 10. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, it's yeah. one of those things. Um, so I will, I will recommend that. I hope you guys had a great Valentine's Day, whether you're single, whether you're by, you know, with a, with a significant other, your wife, kids, family, whatever else. But I, I do like the fact that, uh, you know, it, it is about the communication. Dustin, I'm going to need you to be in, in charge of the, the Facebook feed because this is where I'm going to, if there's any questions out there, I want to, I want to hear them. Tanya, you, what's yeah. that? I will say this. Uh, I got I, I, I to really, also, really keep a no, tight. No, tight rein. Um, I really, <laughs> I really will say, though, that if you go out to dinner on uh, on the 15th, uh, really double check that it's not a Saturday, because if it is in in this instance, um, so Valentine's Day was on a Friday. Most people went out to dinner on Saturday. On the 15th? On the 15th. Okay. Um, so go because 13. so so I will say like double check your days yeah. um, because a lot of people thought oh Valentine's Day proper is going to be the problem the next day not an issue um, if you're the person who's making the reservation whether you're the dude or the girl or the whatever um, then you really have to double check that that's right. that's my that's my opinion good, my good, piece of good fucking advice, advice. yeah. All right, so to the table, to the to the crowd on Facebook, right? Start with an easy one. Describe the worst Valentine's Day you've ever had. Okay, Nate. Please. I like how you deflect that right away. Yeah, hundred percent. Nate, worst Valentine's Day, and again, we're gonna. We're, I'm not saying lightning around, but let, let's let's talk about this. Let's go. Worst Valentine's Day ever had. Ever. Uh. So Jess is actually the only person I've ever been in a relationship with come Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So prior to that, I would have to say it was when I was in high school. It can be with Jess, too. No, no. (laughs) Smart (laughs) man. Oh, look, you're you're smarter than you look. Gotcha. Um, Um, No, it was in a high school. I'm sure, like a lot of people, when you were in grade school, you know, Valentine's Day came around, you went to Walmart or something, you bought... You know, like the twenty or thirty pack of Valentines, and you know everyone in your class, your homeroom class or whatever, had a little box. And you're going fucking way back. You did that in high school. I'm sorry. So, what? And, Wait, know, yeah, so you said high school. Wow. Spanish class. Yep. Okay. Um, so okay, it was an exercise for Spanish. Oh, look at you. No, they were written in English. So I mean, but yeah, <laughs> yeah I but, know, right? but you only got one. So clearly, you don't know Spanish. Huh. I, I took three years. You don't yeah. know Spanish. So Correct. like a, yeah. kinder, a kindergarten, at, in at most a kindergarten level. Gotcha. So Jesus you gotta remember, I'm hey, we're going to do an exercise here um, and uh, make sure it's in English. But no, <laughs> but no, okay. Tanya, Tanya actually already called it because like I went, I didn't get, you know, 30 Valentines or, you know, or I didn't get 30 <laughs> Valentines and put them in everyone's uh, boxes. You oh. know, I, I put Valentines in people that were my friends or people no. that maybe I secretly had a crush on. No. But I was that guy. <laughs> wait, that, wait, wait, wait. No. What was the total number of Valentines yeah, how that you many, put how out? How many Valentines how many did you put out? What's the ratio here? Yeah, how many Valentines versus like what you put out? Uh, I think there were 20 people in my class. And sure. you wrote how many Valentines? Because between friends and crushes. Wow, you had right, so, so now, few friends. Hang, gotcha. Hang, hang, hang. Thank what, you. No, no, no. Yes, I could count them on one hand. I'm more Less interested, than. real quick, side note, out of the five, how many were secret crushes? If you one. say four, okay. Like, look. One. Less less than one hand one. is, is I, friends. Yeah, I, I, I could lose fingers <laughs> so why was this, and still count. Why was this the, that was extreme, <laughs> why was the, uh, why was this your worst Valentine's? Um, 
She didn't give you a Valentine's Day. Because I didn't get any in mine. <laughs> oh my gosh, Nate. I was that kid. You Aww. don't. All right, so first of all, like, that's now Friendship Day in a lot of, like, like elementary schools, which is bullshit. We but talked about that on the previous one. But not high school. You, do, you don't do <laughs> Valentine's Day with boxes in high school. Oh, we did. Kids are mean. I, yeah, kids I are see fucking kids are mean. mean man. <laughs> And now I feel like that's probably the way it is in like elementary school because yeah. now they're basically in high school, like when we were so. in high school. Yeah. Tanya, what was the worst Valentine's Day you've ever had? Oh God. Uh so I was in a relationship. Yeah. Um, and I I maintained I hate like the day the forced romance. Like I'm I'm not a big fan. And he made a point to take me out to dinner, which was Nice, like cool. Um, but then he also made a point to uh, publicly declare for the very first time. I love this. That he loved me. Yes. How old are you? What when was this? I was I was nineteen. Okay. That is older than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was uh, that nine. wasn't. That was. That I was, was not, saying take a decade off. I'm picture like nine years that old. That wasn't. That was not the first time I'd been told I love you, but that was definitely the first time I'd been publicly told. What do you mean publicly? Like, like he made, made a, a scene. Made a scene. Love this. To he. What like, you so say? So we're we're in a we're in a restaurant. We are in a restaurant with tablecloths. At 19 years old, which is a like that's a that's a deal. Right? You're not gonna, you're not gonna get any I'm with me okay. On this one. So look, I I am I am from an area that has a stop like a caution light. So it's this flashing. is like it's Safety it flashes first. continuously. All it's right, a four way right. stop. Okay, so to go to a restaurant that has a tablecloth is a big deal, right? Um, and then <laughs> good he right. Uh, Did, and I was like, he I, took you out. He sort of um i'll get to did that you split the tab uh yes we did <laughs> um because he made a point to, to tell me he stood up and then On made me no okay. he stood up and then made a point to make me stand up and took my hand and love said i oh. want you to understand that i love you and i said oh thanks Good response. It's not probably the response they were hoping for. Yeah. How long were you guys dating? Less than a month. Yeah. No, I mean, well, love, can, love can happen at no, any time. No, I get I it. Mean, I get it. There, there are people who have been together Cupid for less, a, than, uh, less than six guy. months and get married. Um, but And have been married for like 40 years. I get it. I also get that like I was 19 and... I had absolutely no fucking clue what and to do. And that's fair. He obviously, yeah, no. Right. Um, he also didn't, as Eric pointed out, communicate with me that I wanted zero things to do with well, you, any of that. You guys were dating for a month. You're 19. You guys, you can't communicate about anything. So, exactly. I mean, that's just like, how it works. like at that moment, we had okay. we had barely had like physical interaction. Like it was like, well, there was a lot of physical interaction, but Ow. it was like. It was it was what it was. Sometimes um, that leads to uh, the feeling of love for certain you'd, individuals. You'd, you'd tell you that right that. now. Uh, for me, that's what happened. I was so embarrassed that when I said thank you, I also went check, please. Oh, did you actually say that? Like yeah, a movie? Like that's I awesome. straight no, raised my hand no, and asked for no, one, you did not. and everyone in the area was like, oh. Especially because it was Valentine's well, Day, you know what I mean? Wow, because it was packed. It yeah. was so packed. Well, it's Valentine's which is, Day. Which is why I say I would rather have my... <laughs> I would rather stab my own eyes out with rusty nails than go out to dinner on Valentine's Day. So there's a bad experience. So that's, yeah. that's interesting you bring that up because exactly. I will say this is that I think just like anything else, there are times where if that happens at that, that pivotal age... Yeah. And now that basically frames you. Oh, a hundred percent. Until like, so, until oh now, God. right? So now yeah. it, it's it it you're you're leaning back. You're leaning back. You're yeah, like actually like this, I'm, this I'm Valentine's. Thir- I'm I'm thirty years old, right? Yeah. So um, I turned thirty in August. It's so to have. I love having you on the podcast. Yeah, I know because I like run over you. you no just, big deal. You just talk. But I love it. That's to, it, to dead have, air is never a problem. To have, I know, right? <laughs> Except for when Nate wants Easy. no dead air. Um, no, I 
personally, like it's always been something that I've thought has should be a more laid back experience because if during the rest of the year you don't do anything, like why would you? Well, we've talked that about that on previous right? podcasts. So, uh, so that said, I I think that it's. It's weird and really awkward if your relationship isn't already to that point, of course. Um, so for me, my worst Valentine's Day is one that most, like a lot of women that I know, that's what they want. No, not at that point. That's what I, I take right. away from that. The takeaway yeah. there is that you were a month in, this dude is not on the same level. And again, yeah, you talk about communicating, but yeah. it, it's about being on the same level. Exactly. So like, you know, Was it a timing? Nate, hang on. Nate being in a... a a marriage for some time, you, you figure this part out, right? So yeah. you either figure out that they're going to go over the top and you're not. You're going to figure out that I love this person and I've been with them for a certain amount of time and I will be disappointed every Valentine's Day, which that does also happen. Sure. Or you're 19 years old, you've been dating for a month and this guy basically does an 80s rom- r- romantic comedy. You know what I mean? Say anything as Nate's doing it for those of you on the audio. Ooh. So, I mean, there's that. Here's it. There it is. Yeah. My my worst Valentine's uh, it, it's simply and it's very very brief. I've talked about this way back, but I I, I tried to set a bunch of stuff up and the, the girl basically said, um, "Yeah, I don't really, you know, dig Valentine's Day." Sorry. Turns out that they were seeing someone else. Oh, oh so yeah. they so they were a cunt. Gotcha. Well, they had plans. Yeah. Um, and that didn't so involve so here's <laughs> ever. <laughs> they, they, we all grow from our experiences. <laughs> and I'm not going to mic drop because they're so expensive. We, so we're um, to that one. Yeah, so here's the, here's the next question. What's the, uh, and Tanya already answered this. Nate, what's the best Valentine's Day you've ever had? Uh, Tanya, you just described yours, I'm going to assume. No, I well, didn't. So- oh, God. I don't know that it, I can qualify one as the best because mm-hmm. my wife and I, neither one of us, you know, like I said, neither one of us really get into the whole Valentine's Day thing. We've talked about that. Um, I mean, so for us, it's, you know, what's if, the best Valentine's Day you've had? This is, this yeah. is straightforward. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's get after it here. What I, happened? Go on. Well, we're on, we're, I guess, I guess maybe it had to be. This past one. That's awesome. Yeah. And That's awesome. Even even though my wife and I didn't do anything uh, for Valentine's Day with each other, because I was able to go, you know, wish my mom and stepdad happy anniversary, and because after I wished them happy anniversary, went back to the shop. It was right. about a half hour later, my stepdad texted me. He's like, "Hey, I got this in the mail today." Is that from you guys? And mm-hmm. I had I had no idea what he was talking about. So I showed Jess the text message, and she goes, "Yeah, that was that was going to be his, that was from us. Yeah, that was that was from us. It was going to be his Christmas present this year. Okay, but figured, you know, give it to him now so that way you know he has I a like chance that. to get some yeah. use out of it because That's beautiful. We, we don't know yeah if he'll make it t- to Christmas. Yeah, um, and when she told me that, I was like. Damn it! And I kind of Why walked are you mad away. About that? And, then, and then when I walked back, she's like, I, "I didn't, I didn't mean to make you mad." I was like, "No, you didn't make me mad. It, it was emotional." Okay. Yeah. Like I was, because I'm in a cigar shop. The last thing I want to do at a cigar shop in front of a bunch of dudes is sit there and start crying in the middle of the shop. You should yeah. more. No, the, Tanya, I, best, I, best. I will Valentine. say, oh. I will say that with your Valentine's Day, that uh, you told me this story on Valentine's Day, and it almost made me cry in a cigar shop full of dudes, which literally should never happen to a woman. Um, that's not a thing. Why? Yeah. We're not. A, we're, we're not. not getting that we're, conversation we're not allowed to be. We're not allowed to be emotional. And I almost. You saw me. I was yeah. like, oh. Well, now I'm emotional. I'm going to walk away. Fuck you for that. All right, Tanya. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to keep, I'm, again, yeah. tight on, range. On, and, on, and be, on topic, be respectful. My, yeah, best, your best, Valentine's my day. best Valentine's Day. Don't hate me if I uh, cut you off. My, my <laughs> significant other at the time uh, acknowledged that it was Valentine's Day, said, hey, I know you don't want to do anything. Um, there's nothing you want to do. Uh, here's 
your favorite flowers. Uh, it's not because it's Valentine's Day. It's because, like, I was I get them for you every like whatever day it was. Right. Uh, and yeah, that's that's what he did. That so was communicated. My, it really it really comes down to communication with me. Um, that was it. Good. Yeah. So so far, I, I I've had some good Valentine's Day, and I, I you know we've we've talked about in the past, or I've talked about in the past, and past episodes again, episode one hundred six. I, I, going forward, this was my current relationship. I'll say this: one of my best Valentine's Day was uh, last year, right? So things uh, I've had some ups and downs over the years, yeah. um, but with Liz as our first Valentine's Day, and we hadn't been dating. We we were dating for a while, but then we we weren't, and, and we were figuring things out. But when it came to Valentine's Day, we were back in, in in full stride. But we didn't do anything really dramatic. Now we it did have good. you remember this, yeah, I because do. we had a podcast the way the calendar yeah. fell. And uh, what I love about this Valentine's Day is because I was looking at you know Liz, and I'm like, what do I get? We we know each other very well, but at the same time, we're still young in this relationship. And so at the time she's converted to what you're drinking for the first time on the podcast to my knowledge the Miller Lite that you're drinking sure. Tanya yep. but she was a big PBR girl right yeah, so she was. millennial you know and and she's mm. going to hate me for saying this but millennial and PBR was really kind of a hip beer again but uh so I went to Kroger on the way home between work and the podcast and I got a uh a 12 pack of PBR yep Paps you Blue did. Ribbon. It, it won a Blue Ribbon at some point. It's number I, one. I mean, some and some flowers. What I, love about the pot, what I love about that Valentine's Day was not only Liz's reaction that, you know, when, when she walked through, I think, the garage and she saw this 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 case of PBR <laughs> with, with flowers oh, on top of it. So she's good. just like, she like literally did one of those things. She walked by and she's like, wait, is that for me? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she's coming over to the house. What I love about that one, and this is not very romantic, but one of the things I thought was hilarious was, so I'm checking out a Kroger, and I've got a case of PBR. i got flowers in the other hand, right? And You remember this story? Yeah. And I got, this, uh, I got this, uh, this, this lady that's checking out, and she's got her, I don't know, like 14, 15-year-old daughter, right? And uh, they're behind us, behind <laughs> me, and we're doing a self-checkout, and she looks over at me, and she's like, looks like someone's having a good Valentine's Day. I thought she was kind of being sarcastic. Yeah. And then I, I checked out and I'm walking out and she's like, seriously, I'm jealous. And then she like got in, like I saw her in the parking lot. She's getting in her white Range Rover. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and it's like, that was so good. I need, you need to give me your husband's number because he is either going way above board or he yeah. is neglecting you. And this is too expensive to divorce at this yeah. point. Because if you're saying that to me, she's either thinking like, I wish I had those Valentine's Day again that I'm just going to get drunk yep. <laughs> and, and bang. And that's yeah. where you came from. No, <laughs> that okay. Thing. I, I, take, I take back my next Valentine's Day. <laughs> you were right. It just happened. Uh, the lady at the bar. I it told has you nothing, just happened. It has, it has nothing to do with the dude I'm dating, which is sad. Yeah, uh, but it, it also has to do with we're sitting at Fido's bar. And this drunk lady at the bar, she tells me, uh, because I'm drinking Teeling's Neat because I'm lazy. Which you love. Right? Which you love. I do love. Yeah. She told me, she was like, you're a keeper. And I was like, oh, I know. And she looked at my significant other and she goes, just so you know, you need to wife her up. (laughs) And I will say, we've been been dating for like a month. Right. So uh, so that was super awkward. I could feel the waves of awkward just Love it. flowing off him. Love it. And that's why it was the best Valentine's Day. Beautiful. Right. There. All right. Let's switch gears a little bit. This yep. is uh, still still related. I've got some other ones here. Um, and, and Dustin, I hope you're 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 monitoring that Facebook feed here. Um, so with Valentine's Day. Right. So yeah. this is interesting to me because, you know, again, being in the bourbon and and and, and rise and whiskey and, and cigar of industry. Course. Right. So so one of the things that we we deal with, one of the things that that really leads us to this part of the podcast is that, you know, this is the life topic. So I know that that I was brought in because of things that I was going through. A lot of people are brought into this this community because of things they're going through in other parts of life, including the romantic side. And you're either struggling with something or you're you're just negating that this stuff doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I love this panel because we have we have someone that's 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 been married for a while. That is 
admittedly different than a lot of people that have been married for a while. It's yes. True. Say yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Tanya, who last year, if you listen, she was she was proudly single. Proudly. And now she is Proudly, semi. Prou- no, proudly not single. Oh, I love it. Like, let me just say, you, I like right, the guy right, I'm dating. All right, all right. Do you like romantic movies, and what is your favorite rom- oh, romantic okay. movie? Yep. Let's go. Princess Bride. <gasps> Classic. Oh, my God. Because no. Princess Bride's everything. Oh. It is romance. It is comedy. Right. It is action. Like, it is an absolutely fantastic movie all the way around. Very quotable. If you have to watch a, a romance movie... There's a love story that's got sword fighting and humor. Can't go wrong with it. Tanya? Fuck, I hate you because that's the same. Like That's that's, what, that's actually what we watched on Valentine's Day. That's fair. I, my dude and I. Like, he... <laughs> if you start calling my you, bro you and I, that gets weird. You are allowed to say weird. his name. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm not. Bro and I were watching. Eric like, already called him out. Wait a second. Listen, he... Uh, yeah, no, my... Like the guy I'm seeing, he's we'll just call him Make a Wish. Make a Wish. Let's call him that because, like, no, that's he funny. plays he plays hockey, and I shouted that at him. Twenty twenty, you can't say that. All right, so um, so yeah, but you, he, you like that movie? I, I like that movie. Um, I also really, even though it's oh god, it makes me a bad bad woman probably. You're fine, uh, but I really like Love Actually. Like it's a Christmas movie, sort Why, of. No, that's um, actually in my top two or three. Yeah, I'm saying oh. um, it's. It's it's a fun cheers. cheers. Uh, it's a. I have an empty glass. So. Oh, well, is it? Because I can fill it. Here we got go. other whiskeys yeah. too. Um, so love actually is probably one of them, and then maybe. Oh God, he's gonna hate me for this. Uh, I made him watch Pride and Prejudice, but the Kira Knightley version because Kira yeah, Knightley. Yeah. I'm gonna be real. Like, well, same whoa. reason. Love like, actually a little bit. Like, yeah, yeah Kira exactly. Knightley is smoking okay. hot. Yes. Okay. Smoking hot. Same. High. Same. Um. So yeah. No, I made him watch that when he made me mad. Actually. Bobby Hirschman says Johnny and Frankie. Uh. Well yes. played. Good choice. Yeah. All right. So, um, <laughs> Ryan Newman's watching again. He did comment. I want to. I want to do a, a real. Quick cheers to Ryan Newman. This is the the point where... So Ryan Newman, who's been on the podcast recently, uh, if you guys are in the Columbus area, you're you're stopping by. So he's been with the Tinderbox at Easton for quite some time. If you're listening to this audio side of it, uh, I do want to say Ryan has now left the Tinderbox after six or so years. Shannon's looking alarmed. He has taken a manager position at Royal Cigar. Again, I hope to have him back on to talk about that shop. Uh, congratulations, Ryan Newman, for the the new venture. We hope that uh, you take some of the things that you learned and value from the Tinderbox at Easton and the community, the Bourbon and BS community as well. Um, we, we appreciate you, and we hope that you do extremely well. This is your opportunity to really, really uh, grow as a person and as a man and uh, a tobacconist. So cheers to Ryan Newman, cheers. everyone. Cheers. Yeah. 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 We, n- we never want to wish our fellow people in the industry ill will. No, no uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, Q also says, Q has been on, he says, White Castle Valentine dinner slash... <laughs> Slash the following Valentine's after a breakup. It's good. I will say. They do an amazing Valentine's. You you know. You do have to make reservations at White Castle for Valentine's Day. This become a thing. That is brilliant marketing. Oh, absolutely. I will say, so my, so Love Actually is actually up there for me. And yeah, yeah, it's one of my, my, one of my favorite Christmas movies. And I just like it. Um, I'm a chick flick guy. I will say this. And I. Oh, yeah. You would never guess it, yeah. especially if you only watch the podcast. Um, I would say my other. Yeah, we'll, we'll have another episode about this. Yes. Um, one of my uh, favorite uh, rom-coms, and it's funny because uh, I want to get Big Rob on here. I just saw him, uh, sadly, at a, a, um, sadly, at a funeral this weekend, but one of my really good friends, and it was something um, that we we actually – joked about a lot but uh 10 things i hate about you uh (laughs) it's so funny so we got mostly we have one we have one female in the garage and a bunch of dudes and i say 10 things i hate about you like yep 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 yep. no this is yeah that was a fantastic movie it is a fantastic movie it's it's hilarious it's based off a shakespeare thing julia styles it is yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. tammy the shrew and uh heath ledger which he was great um he was good but such a quotable movie uh j uh what is his name? Fuck. Justin or Justin? Justin Timberlake. No. No, he wasn't in JG. that. JG. Jake Gyllenhaal? No. Oh. God damn. 
I can't remember. Anyway, I don't know. It was, he's amazing. He's the he's the guy who loves her sister. Oh, uh, Joseph yes. Gordon Lovett. Yeah, his three it. first Joseph names. Joseph Gordon Lovett. Gordon. 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 Joseph Love it. Gordon. All right. Yes, Next one. Amazing. Which traditional gift would you rather receive on Valentine's Day? Chocolates, flowers, or a card with a personal message? Nate, Go shoot. On. Make it brief on this one. Uh, those are my only three options? Yep. That's it. I mean, that's all I ask. Chocolate. Wow. Okay. Card right, with so. a personal message. Yeah. Yeah. Card. Card. Shannon. Steve. What? Card, uh, uh, Sean. Food. That food, food, one of the food three. was not an option. Ch- so chocolate, gotcha. And yeah. that's twenty four hours a day, I think, with you right now. Uh, right. That's why I said it has to be. If it has to be one of those three, chocolate. How's the pregnancy going? What? What? No. Because you because you want chocolate and food with the food. You know, yeah. Saying you're pregnant. You yeah. Oh, okay. Um. So I would I would say I would say for me. <laughs> All right, so I would say for me a, a card with a personal message, but I also don't like those because it's it's a lot of. I don't like reading a card with a personal message when there's other people around. No. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. That's a, that's a private situation. A lot, a lot of pressure. By yourself. Here. Yeah. Do you yeah. save yeah. like old birthday cards? I don't like cards in general, and this is why I'm glad you brought that Dude. up because I don't know what to do with them after I get them. How long do you keep? So them? you put them on the mantle. Do you do you keep them? Do you throw them away? Because if you throw them away afterwards, like the, it's it's been sent. Personal messages, it's really nice. When you have a grandma that dates them, you're just like, I should probably throw this in a file somewhere or at least a drawer. No. But when you get those Christmas cards or you get those Valentine's Day cards or whatever it is, it's, yeah, I feel guilty thrown away, but I typically do. A year. Um, a year is the... Okay. That's what I... That's is I Valentine's Day the most romantic day of the year? If not, what day is? One. Why is no you first? I'm well, Tana, no. Tana, you first. Okay, as you as the guest, uh, fuck no, it's not the most romantic day of the year. What is? Any day that you feel something, that's the most romantic day of the year. It wow. should. It could be a. T- it could be a Tuesday in May for whatever fucking reason that you feel you love your significant other. That's the most romantic day of the year. That's my opinion. What day of the year is that? March fifth. I thought you, you, got, you got March Patty's 15th, Day coming up. March. Um, oh. President's Day just happened recently. Yeah, that is romantic. I like <laughs> yeah. that. Pick today, Nate. For me, I'm going to say March fifth or another day. Uh, it, it's it's kind of a toss up between either my wife's birthday or my birthday because mm-hmm. interesting. I like it for my wife's birthday. I cook, and typically I cook. Fillets and scallops and Hasselbeck potatoes uh, with a bottle of wine. Uh, and then for my birthday, which uh, my birthday falls on New Year's Eve, so we always go out to Ocean Club for my birthday, uh, nice. which it's it's always packed. And, you know, there, there have been several years. Because it's New Year's Eve, there have been several years where we've seen people, you know, just a couple tables down from us. Uh, get engaged that night yeah. or break up. Oh my God, that'd never, be the best. No, no never that'd seen, be the best. I'm sorry, that's amazing. Break, no, no, never seen that. But we, we no, have that's seen. New Year's Day after you sober up. <laughs> no, it's not. No, we, I've, that's, I've seen that's several. How that works. I've seen several New Year's Eve breakups. But no, They're beautiful. But no, I um, mean, f- for for New Year's Eve for my birthday, I'm usually off all that week. Yeah. So it's just um, so earlier in the day, we'll go to Tinderbox, we'll hang out, have a couple cigars. Go to dinner, have a nice dinner, have a cocktail. So to you, that's the most romantic that's day. Beautiful. Go, and then and then we'll go home and you know either have a bottle of wine or I'll have a couple drinks and then we we just watch TV. That's beautiful. And then like two minutes before midnight, like oh I guess we ought to turn to the ball dropping. So and oh, and then after that you, we go to wait, bed. Wait, but, do you do you kiss on New Year's Eve? We do. Oh, that's kiss sweet. every day. We'll do that. I yeah, I mean, do, we'll do you kiss, kiss every, every day? day? Almost day. yes. Aww. You so, looked away when you said that. No, we do. Okay. So Aww. I don't know if you're looking at the camera or away from That's me. That's so <laughs> cute. No, well, be, because we um, don't. <laughs> no, because with 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 us, you know, my wife works at OSU, and so we park at OSU, and then we walk to the hospital, and then she works uh, underneath the hospital, and then we just go, <laughs> "All right, bye. Here's what time to pick me up." Yeah. And then I walk my two and a half miles to work while she just walks right inside right. the door. So, right. so yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think uh, 
Valentine's Day is is necessarily the most romantic day. I think it uh, it's interesting. I think that uh, it, it has gotten a bad rap, and I think this podcast actually kind of sorry. No, no, you, don't be sorry. It's 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 interesting to me because it's something that depending on your your history, and we were talking about that with like your nineteen year old, you know, Romeo. <laughs> I I think that uh, this no, he is, wasn't. Well, it, yeah, like it was definitely a Romeo situation. He Juliet died, did, I didn't. Well, Juliet um, chose to no, die. So what I'm saying is, is that I, I think that, you know, Valentine's Day can be not necessarily the most romantic, but I, I like the fact that there is something there that, say you do, everyone talks about the other side of it, right? And they're, they're like, yeah, if that's the only day that you celebrate, blah, 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 blah. No, but if you do it the rest of the year, and yet you still celebrate Valentine's yeah. Day, no one fucking talks about that. Because it's, it's not it's no, not no, a big no, thing. No, hey, hang on, hang on. It's it's mm-hmm. it's. Yeah, I know you. I know. I got. I, I told you the rains. The rains. I will, I will argue that I said that last Valentine's Day. No, I got to go back and listen. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it right now while we're recording. Obviously. But I, I will rains. say, <laughs> I will <laughs> say that um, I don't. I don't know what the the most va- the romantic day of the year is. It's. It, I don't think it. Like I like what you guys are saying. It's especially you, Tanya. It's, it's yeah. not necessarily a calendar date i think it's something that it's per year it's something yeah. different there's a special memory there um every day has the opportunity no it does to it be does it does day. that's the thing it depends on the relationship you're in yeah. who you're with and uh what moment you're having at that day and like, i'll say this that yeah. we got uh I, I love that we we have people <laughs> that are listening on the facebook feed rob wilson who uh who's been an active from from rocky patel i exude romance on a daily basis he does i, I need a second and actually i need a second opinion on that like, not, not you yeah. um, that, that's heat coming off that bald head of his. yeah uh eric eric goldhaber said uh scrapbooking and then he also said every day if you're happy while well, as we were talking yeah. and then q says eric goldhaber facts i don't know if he's talking about every day if you're happy or scrapbooking so <laughs> I I, i'm curious about that part i'm gonna be real <laughs> and then i want to throw this to dustin can i can i read the comment here that you, you you wrote here yeah so if you can turn on his mic here but uh so dustin who's a part of the podcast he says my dad would send my mother flowers randomly while she's at work with a card that just said thinking of you wouldn't be on any specific date just because yeah. the people she worked with would always ask what did he do because that's typically what happens Good question. Uh, that's that's my side of it not his uh but he'd just do it to as as a kind gesture i yeah. got that from him and and love doing little things like that for kathy who's his fiance yeah i'm gonna throw it over to you dustin i will say that there is something on the other side of it is if you buy flowers on a regular basis you know what i mean because that's like the the romantic fairy tale is like, oh, he just buys me flowers For whatever weekly. Reason. No, if you have a girlfriend or a wife that you're buying flowers weekly, is like, stop spending money on flowers. God damn it. <laughs> I, 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 we we want to do yeah, this. You okay, keep complaining yeah. about we don't have enough money and then you Ooh. spend 10 to $20 on flowers every week. Stop. That's like, one of the lowest car payment. working at a grocery store with a yeah. floral department. Yeah. Because you know the floral lead. And when they get ready to mark down flowers, yeah. you get the best looking ones. You know the deals so, too, so, right? So you, get also, a, so you get a deal. So you get all the stuff that's getting ready to die. I will. I Not will, necessarily. I will, I will also. It looks make, like it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's that's what's going to happen. But you I get will, the best like looking that. ones. Like you that. can you can still doctor it up, and it still looks great. And You're it sounds yeah. bad on Valentine's no. Day, right? No, not okay. necessarily, because no. flowers can actually last a lot longer if you uh, know how to. Exactly. For them. You got to use those little also, packets, right? You got to use those little packets. She, if she happens, like, say me, um, happens to love flowers that are available year round, the flowers that I love are, let's Latin. say, with tax, uh, five dollars a a bunch. It's great, right? So if you're if you're with someone who loves just an inexpensive flower. I like that. Then cool, just like random Tuesday, random Friday, random Thursday, when you're thinking about them. Because when you're thinking about someone, that's the most romantic day of the year. I think the key, though, there is is that don't be that 19-year-old Romeo in your story. And I think we talked about this on yeah, the last no, two you, podcasts. Yeah, you're right. Right? So like when we were doing Valentine's Day is that when you are trying to, to push too hard and you're like, oh, I'm just thinking about you. 
Except Stop. I'm just I'm just thinking you are about You're smothering me. I'm just Stop thinking about me. I'm like just if you're in like a 10 year relationship, you. cool. Yeah. I'm but just, I like I like that you brought up a good point Dustin about the the fact that you're just like, you know, like what did you do wrong? Cuz that's where a lot of people think. It's like if someone is like, ugh. "Hey, it's Thursday. Here's flowers yeah. and chocolates." And you're like, <laughs> "Okay." <laughs> Yeah, what you no, do? No, my dad would. He would just randomly send her flowers, and he'd have them obviously, you know, sent to where she worked, which is you know, at, in my local school district. Sure. You know, she worked in the lunchroom, and you know, she would just get flowers. You know, obviously, she'd be surprised because she would know nothing about it, and all the ladies would say, "Well, so what do you do wrong?" And she'd be like, "Well, nothing." He. He, I guess he just decided to send me flowers. It's, a, it's a slippery br- slope sometimes in up, public. That brings up a question. And All right. Like, to, I, got, I got more here. To, yeah. to yeah. touch Go on, on a, question. like as far as Valentine's Day, so last year, you know, it was our first Valentine's together for Kathy and I. And so I got Kathy flowers, but I also got Cadence a smaller bouquet of flowers as well. Oh, that's just, nice. just for her. So now this year I talked to one of my other ASMs at my store who used to be a head floral, uh, at another store. And I said, Hey, I need you to make me a bouquet of flowers for Kathy. Here's what I'm thinking, you know, dollar amount, etc. Right. And then I want you to make another one, a little smaller one for cadence. And here's what I'm thinking for that. You know, here's her favorite colors. So what she did was she made a nice big arrangement for Kathy and then made a smaller one that was literally a mini me version of Kathy's no, flowers. That's sweet. Oh, that's that's so sweet. so adorable. when I got home from work, you know, I had to close on Valentine's, so I didn't get home till nine forty five, ten o'clock. And Cadence is always waiting if she's still up. Yeah. So she opened the door and I just put the flowers in her face and she took off running and was all excited. I like that. And that's so now cute. every year whether they're listening or not, which they probably aren't, but that's yeah, too late. Yeah, but it's still but, cute. So now every year I'm going to it's it's going to be something that I'm always going to do is where when yeah. I buy Kathy flowers I'm going to get Cadence a little bouquet of flowers no, I like too that because a lot. she just no, loves I do. it. I, she I loves it just like as that. much. All right, uh, nice. you had a question, Nate. Yeah. Well, why is it that when guys buy their significant others flowers or something nice? That's not on a special day, not on Valentine's Day, not on an anniversary yeah. or any date that has any significant meaning. Why is it that the first thing people ask is, oh, what did he do wrong? Well, oh. because there's a history there, right? So no. No, uh, let me ask. I'm, I'm going to feel this one, Tanya. Yeah, go on. Um, <laughs> not only is there like a, a society that. thing, right? But uh, it, it's because people have had those experiences, right? So people sure. have messed up and they do that to say sorry. So you can't negate that that fact, okay. it, right? So there's yeah. always when when someone messes up, it doesn't have to be a major mess up. Let's 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 PG this a little bit. There's something that that sometimes you you have an argument or whatever, and you want to like send them flowers or do something nice yeah. that people are like. What do you do? It's not always like you know cheating or anything extreme, but something that they did. If you know, so they put the personal agenda on there. First and foremost, right? So, but if you have someone that you know they're happily married, they're happily in a relationship, or it's especially, I'll say this, Nate, if it's a young relationship, okay. right? And you send them that, they're gonna be like, he's so sweet. Now, if you've been together for a while and they've complained before about anything. said person anything. or anything, yeah. and that happens, they're like, what do you do? Does that yeah. make sense? Okay. I, will, okay. I will I will also say like as someone who really enjoys gifting, right? Like I like if I have someone significant in my life. What'd you do? I yeah, no, I get asked that all the time. Like um Eric Goldhaver says because we fuck up a lot. What'd you not, what'd not you wrong what'd you do? Too. And it and it has nothing to do it has I mean, at least in my instance, maybe I'm just too much of a dude, but it's just like what'd you what did you do? I got asked that because I, I gifted something. It was yeah. fine. Like, no big deal. Uh, what'd you do? Okay. And I was like, uh, no, nothing that I know of, but I <laughs> thought I'd, I, I really thought it'd be nice. And if he thinks I did something, he can bring that up because we try to communicate. I don't know. Um, All right, right yeah. Steve, what do you got next? Uh, do people still go out to uh, restaurants on Valentine's Day? 
um, or stay home since it's amateur night. So you guys already answered. I mean, like well, Tandy, yeah. you you did a hybrid, right? You kind of went out, but you were at a bar that was next to the cigar shop. Exactly. Like exactly. Nate, no. It no. It was. It was. I important. said yes. It was important to uh, to have food that neither of us cooked because neither of us wanted to do dishes. Okay. That's okay. that's legit. Why we got food out. Uh, I I like to cook. I like to cook for him. Um, I enjoy cooking for people I care about, regardless right. regardless of whether there's romantic intention there or not. Um, but to have that moment, because I don't have a dishwasher in my apartment currently, um, so regardless of that, I like we we went out. We went out for food. And Fido's, like, to plug them, Jesus. Amazing food. Right now, yeah, no, always. Their food is fabulous. If they, you're in the right Columbus, now, Ohio area, yeah. Yeah, check out Fido Irish like Pub. It's a re- uh, restaurant right next door to that. Uh, Box Season. Yeah. Sean wants to say something, and I'm going to ask this question. Yep. Um, Sean, I want you to field this first. Uh-oh. Because you are absolutely the wrong person to field this, and I, 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 I love, love this it. about it. Um, Where should I not pick up the mic? Okay, go ahead. No, you have the mic in hand. So That's what you right. get. And all Nate right. put it on. <laughs> Something to say, but go for it. Brad. For those of you, you all right, so listen, for those of you that are single, right? So we're talking about this, and, and for those of you who are listening in right now, uh, best idea for a first date. Oh, God. Hang on. From a dating app match. <laughs> oh. Fucking threw you a curveball that just... Oh, there you go. Go on. Chin music at the same time. I've, been married, strike, man. I've been married 18, for 18 years. Answer so. the question. All right, and, so and then you can good, say what you want to what, say. What's a good thing? What was the first... Best question? first date. Best idea Please. for a first date from a dating app match. Let's go. Come on. Oh, God. I, um, I love this. I'm you were, you were the right person. I'm I can ready. tell you the worst ones. Uh, I didn't ask that question. Remember, I, guys, guys, listen. I, I'm actually asking the questions here. Sean, go ahead. Well, I'll probably go old school since I've been married for 18 years, so I would... Well, dating apps didn't exist, but go on. Go on. Right, yeah. You did a VCR tape. I didn't even have a cell phone. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm a really great guy, me. and I love walks on the beach. Just give someone advice. So you're talking to yeah. a guy, right? right. So, so you're talking to... I think, uh, okay, I got it. Okay. You can talk to a, a millennial or a Gen Z. Well, or, or someone your age, right? So, so let's, let's frame. I'll frame this, right? So how old are you, Sean? I'm 49. You're 49. So you have this 40 some year old friend, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, I'm, I'm divorced. Got uh, on a dating hang, app. Hang, hang, hang. I got on a, I got, I got on a dating app. <laughs> I'm on, not Tinder. Let's get away from that, right? But like, mm-hmm. I'm on Bumble. I'm on Match. I'm on eHarmony. Plenty, plenty of fish. Whatever Let's it is. Go. And they're like, hey, man, I, I actually matched with this girl. We've been chatting for about two weeks. And uh, it, it, it's, Take Valentine's Day out of it, right? She but like, seems like a going, lovely woman. I want to take her out to somewhere that's I want, like... I, I want to do a first date. I'm not trying to just fuck what's her. Your, what's your advice? <laughs> well, the, you you overqualified, but... <laughs> well, if it you're was, assuming things. If it was Tanya, then right? I think I've done to do anything now. Um, wow, I would say, low bar, you trip over. I Jesus. would say... Really? Sean, go after it. I would say that the biggest thing, whatever you do, is that uh, is nowadays with... How people communicate, it's all through the phones and everyone's with their phones. I think the first thing you do is you, you try to make a point where you can, the phones aren't in play. So you're communicating with the person one on one. So you go somewhere that allows you to have an intimate conversation and get to know each other on a one to one basis without any kind of distractions. Um, so you go out. Yeah, I would say go out somewhere, just somewhere simple. You don't have to like, to me, I've never tried to overdo things. It's more of just a simple, hey, let's meet somewhere. Get to know each other on a on a personal basis, and then see where it goes. Okay, so yeah. it's just it's more of a. It's all about for me when I was, you know, I started date when I was dating. It was just about it's simple. Back, again, this is old school, but just going out to dinner. Okay, went somewhere okay. simple and just. But it, the thing is, though, it's all about that conversation and how you connect. Look into their eyes when you speak to them. Yeah, let them talk. Don't talk over them. Listen to what they have to say. Ouch. I'll say this. Uh, I'll agree with okay. you. <laughs> Treat it like a first date. Right. Whether it's yeah. before the dating apps or not. That's, 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 the, that's the hurdle you actually are tripping over is that you treat it like a first date. Mm. You, whether you do go get coffee. Right. You, you go get dinner. You go yeah. get, some, get drinks somewhere, whatever. But keep it brief. 
Yeah. Make it a first impression. Go in, get out, you know what I mean, and all that stuff, and then yeah. figure out where you're going to go from there. What did you want to say, Sean? Oh, just when you said, like, you know, something romantic outside of uh, Valentine's Day. I've been married for 18, almost, this may all be 19 years. One thing that impresses the hell out of my wife is when she comes home, there's a clean house. When you, I, I got impressed when I came home and Liz cleaned the house. Right, so it's I it's. I don't I don't have anyone important there. coming over. It's just you all. Right, but I think. <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> like low you. key, you, low key. No, she was impressing you. She was impressing like, you. She was whatever. impressing you. No so, joke. She was impressing you. But like whatever. when you, when you're at that point in your relationship where you're married, if you have kids, if you have pets, if you have whatever, you come home to a house where there could be chaos with with kids or fr- kids friends over, to be able to have your significant come home from a long day of work and I don't have to worry about dealing with the regular daily shit to be able just to chill, to disconnect from what they're doing all day and not have to walk into a, a shit show is it goes a long way. Yeah. That's so, a, that's a good point. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's showing effort, right? I mean, yeah. It's showing that you value the situation yeah. you're in. Yeah. That's a, that's you a know huge what I mean? deal. It is a huge deal. Yeah. All right. Oh, you have something. Showing, uh, so regardless of whether they're, uh, if they're a dog or a cat person, I'll say this: uh, going so going to a going to a cat cafe or uh, going to a an animal shelter and like right. doing that, yeah. like right. that would be fun. Playing with pets, like well, that's depending a, on the person you're with, right? No, you know right? I mean? Like if they if person. they if they hate that, then don't. But if they love dogs, go to an animal shelter, play with dogs. Uh, if they love uh, cats, then go to a cat cafe. Um, now you got to be careful there because you might end up with said dog, said cat. If you're in so the this market, a, if you're some, in the market, go I'm just for saying, it. don't do it as a just, romantic gesture I'm because that'll backfire. If they're like, we should take him or her home, and you're like, yeah, oh no, 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 we're going to do this next time. If you're on a first date and they say we Arthur should take a, we should take a cat home, like right. maybe don't lightning do round, lightning yeah. round, just right. brief lightning round, oh, just to okay. break it up. Right. Glad I didn't answer that one. What color is love? I hate this question. This is when I did a and a with Spencer and Jake. Jake was like about it, like some tree question. I love seeing this one because I was like, <laughs> this would be something that Jake threw in there. And I love oh, Jake. God. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's like, all right. So, so Nate, what color is love? First, such a bullshit question. Yeah, no, I first thought it is red, but you say Jake and Jake's like, you know, red light. All right. So red and red. All right. Tanya. Pink. Why pink? I, I'm curious about that. Red. I get. I'm sorry, Nate. I don't. Pink, why, why? Why pink? Why, why is pink? Red? More feminine no, red? No. Why Why is pink love? Yeah. That's your question. That was I my just, follow-up I, no, question. No, I, I, just, I just wanted to, <laughs> why, I wanted to verify what the question that I'm answering is. Why do you say pink is the, the, why is, the why color is of love? love? Um, color of love. Pink, pink is the color of love because it is something that is mutable. It's something that doesn't have the vibrancy that is red, but it also isn't something... That is white. It's not something wow. that has to have. You did better on this like, question. I thought all you would. of the things. It's something that can flow. That's why I think pink is the color of love. You could like summarize that on a Hallmark card, and that's what Eric just said. Oh, and, did he? I'm not. He why, said, I need people to watch the, the, and then he the said Facebook. Next, group. next. Right? Yeah, everyone's next. like bullshit good, questions. Good times. Go on. <laughs> All right, so so let's take it off of you, right? So so yeah. let's do this. Do you enjoy playing Cupid? Do you try to introduce people in the hope that they will make a love match? I've known a lot of people. Yes. That that uh, are everyone. <laughs> We've had some immediate responses. I've had some people in 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 my life that they really really enjoy playing Cupid. And it's for different reasons. It's it's making yeah. people happy. It's yeah. I think you guys w- would get along, or it's just simply the first, but more forced is. I know you. I know you. We should make this happen. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but I like both of you. Right. You should be together. All right, grab the mic, Shannon. Go on. Kick that off here. So. So that's how me and my my, uh, wife met. Uh, Our our friends thought it'd be kind of funny because we had the same name, Shannon and Shannon. 
kind of introduced us on a blind date. That's a horrible joke, by the way. Right. <laughs> uh, amazing joke. Fuck but off. But people go back and listen to when Shannon was on the podcast and tell that story. Hey, Shannon, amazing. I'm sorry. I got I yeah. love this response, and we're getting to that point. Doug Ruffalo says, <laughs> when I asked the color thing, he says, it's whatever color you see when your toes are curled. <laughs> <laughs> my That's are not cur- always love. I'm going to tell you that right now. Black. That's not like always MBD. love. <laughs> You might see red, you might see white, but Black, it's though. not love. <laughs> I see I the back my of my eyes. eyelids. Go ahead, Shannon. I'm sorry. I, I saw that. I could not resist. <laughs> I'm uh, sure so, you've seen that color, too. Right. So, yeah, they uh, kind of put us together. It was like a blind date. Um, they went to her like, hey, we got this guy I want you to meet. His name's Shannon. She was like, hell no. I'm not meeting a guy named <laughs> yeah. Shannon. So they set it up kind of like a blind date. We met that night and we've been together ever since that night and we've been together 15 years now good stuff yeah 10 years married 15 years together so do you want to be cupid sometimes no so you just you were does your wife part of it no does your wife want to be cupid yeah i don't think so not a matchmaker no we just kind of let people do their things oh you know what i mean so like happy doesn't want to like had add happiness no okay (laughs) No, I don't. I don't try to get in people's business like that and try to match make because that can fair. always be crazy. Yeah, absolutely. No, but. it's got to be for me. It's it's got to be a very very heavy, like someone is looking for something and they tell me what they're looking for and I know that person and that other person is also looking, and it matches up. Right. Like I feel like I'm more of no. like an eHarmony type of thing. Like I, I gotta have like, like a ninety n- questions, ninety question day. questionnaire for both of you just over a period of like six months, and you're like, yeah. oh, you're both so single. Hey, we're we're having a happy hour somewhere, and uh, you should. <laughs> we're having a bourbon and BS community meetup. You guys should both come. I totally hey, have you know met, your uh, guy. my friend Todd, <laughs> or have you met my friend whatever? You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. This is how it works. Nate, Cupid or no? Absolutely not. Because <laughs> I don't pretend to know what the other person's attracted to. That's fair. So I obviously, Tanya. I obviously uh, talk to a lot of people about a lot of different things, Not right? Obvious, but yeah. Go uh, ahead. So people, for whatever reason, it must be my resting nice face. Uh, they tell me what they're looking for in a significant other, and I definitely have played matchmaker to a lot of successful degree. It's been successful. Successful. Uh, long-term success, even. All right. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, and, I, and I'm and i such a dude about it, too. It's like, oh, you guys you guys think you'd bang well? Cool. Let's... Uh, Going back to Doug Ruffalo's uh, comment about the color of love let's, is... Let's, like, like, the color of love is black. You're closing your eyes. Good, good, good All plan. All right. Here, here's another question, right? So, uh... <laughs> All right. Again, switching gears. Yeah. We had this actually. It was interesting. I, I thought this question was a little relevant. We didn't go to this extent, but when we had Laurel on last week or two weeks ago now, I say last week's last episode, but it was something about where she's being a female in the cigar world. And, and it was about like if there was a sale made because of who she was and all that stuff. Right. So this is something that this is in everyday life. How yeah. do you deal? And this is this is I love having Tanya on because this is that again, I, I use this this term too often sometimes, but it's just the obvious. So the elephant in the room, right? So you have a female in. I know a lot of guys answers in yeah. the majority standpoint. Um how do you deal with unwanted romantic attention? No matter what the situation, I'm gonna I'm gonna preface yeah. this to like I'm gonna I'm gonna clarify. Not you're not married. Like it doesn't matter if you're married. It doesn't matter if you're single. It doesn't matter if you're 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 whatever involvement you are, are in. I'm saying well, I mean, like just in general, and you can you you can bring in because it's from your personal standpoint, yeah. right? But how do you deal with unwanted romantic attention? Yeah, Nate. How do you deal with unwanted romantic still attention? She's been doing shit. that all night. She's been, <laughs> she's been making me answer every question. For I'm going to have to compete with Tanya's podcast in about a year from now. <laughs> I know that already. I, I already know that. Oh, come on. Uh, We're going to have a co-op at some point. There you go. Um, Yay. <laughs> how, I, how I deal with... Unwanted romantic Unwanted. attention. Unwanted. So you are the... I'm sorry I have like, to okay. qualify okay. this. So, I mean, do you want me to clarify this more? No, so, it, you got it. I feel you. Being married, like, hey, regardless, that's nice. Like, no, mm. 
before I was married, bring it on. Really? Even if she was ugly? I still had standards and they weren't all No, no, I, no, no, no. I totally get it. But like ugly, 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 ugly doesn't mean like no, no, necessarily no. just physical. No, Go on. If, if someone was attracted to me. Yeah. Have you, have you and heard you of weren't Coyote with Ugly? Them? I mean, <laughs> I have. <laughs> no, if someone was attracted to me, I'm like, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. But then I would always take into account other aspects of the person. Like what? <laughs> Eric said had they're, Sanders. <laughs> no, no, they're, I mean. That's good. That's good. Did love, you say had love, Sanders or have love, Sanders? Love, Eric, by the way. That was good. Love you. Thank you, Eric, for tuning in. I love that. Good had call out. and still have. All right. Um, <laughs> he was asking you to clarify. Is it past tense? No, I, I mean, because I didn't get that a whole lot. Um, Shocking. Thanks, Daniel. I don't know if that's sarcastic Love you or not. Too. Um, Come on, no, um, No, if, if it was someone that I thought was a nice person and had certain qualities about right. them that had nothing to do with their physical appearance. Oh, wow. The level of bullshit. Go on. You call it bullshit. All right, unwanted. I'll, I'll clarify this before so, Tanny answers. No, no, no. Unwanted no, I, is. I, I, I want to hear yours. So unwanted is you're not interested. Yeah. That's it. That's, That's it. So, so married For whatever or not, reason. single or, or, or relationship, yeah. whatever it is, unwanted, you're not interested. How do you handle that? I'm flattered, but no, thank you. find someone else. How do you cool. handle it, though? What do you say? Yeah. I'm flattered, but no, thank you. I've never really had that issue. So awesome. <laughs> Steve, okay. what's no, yours? Uh, you no, I'm no, no. I'm running this podcast. I'm you running got, this podcast. I'm you asking got, you. You got, you got, the, you got no. the voice. No, like, I'm asking like, you, like, Tanya. You tell answer me. and I'll answer. Okay. Yeah, Jess, so, called um, you, Jess called you the e, the Barry White of eHarmony, I mean, by the I'm way. I'm just going to I'm gonna throw it out there. I didn't like, see that comment. Like I, uh, <laughs> so I. <laughs> unwanted. Uh, unwanted, right? Like for whatever reason, right? Um, my, my response is always, oh, thanks. Um, let me <laughs> sell you something. Um, or, oh, thanks. Uh, like, here's a great suggestion. We can have a wonderful conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know, and I am a hundred percent sure yours is the same. Like with your voice, like, let's yeah, go. Steve's just going to say, Come on. Next. like, should I sing? <laughs> no. Uh, how do I deal with unwanted, uh, <laughs> unwanted interest? Um, actually it was, it was, it was interesting. So what I, what I found over the years when I had someone, Shannon has a microphone in his hand, which I love the fact that he wants to answer this question. Awesome. I'm ready. It. Let's go. What I want to say though, is that, uh, the way I handle it and, and it's, it, this is one of the few times in my life that I, I thought a white lie would absolutely be the best, no. best scenario. Yeah. Um, yeah, I white lied. And it was, it was one of those things that, uh, when I had someone that I was not interested, that's unwanted. Right. So, um, it, it's, it, for most reasons, I'm just not, I'm not interested. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's not based on looks all the time. If it is based on looks, if it's based on the like, scenario, who cares, whatever, who cares? Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, I would always, hey, it, and I will say this, I can help hold a conversation. As you guys know, if you listen to the podcast, I can hold the conversation to, to a level that it continues going and I will just yeah. brush past any of this unwanted attention. Um, same. That would absolutely lead to, and this is what I'll say to people that are uninterested, is is consider that person as someone that's putting themselves out there. And this is maybe more than most people want to deal with. But I, I would get to the point where they would actually approach me with the question is like, do you have a girlfriend? I'm like, oh, that question. And I say, you know, whether I did or didn't, whether I was on and off, whatever, whatever it was, I'm like, I do. I do, and I'm flattered. Thank you so much, and all that stuff. And it's it's one of those things that it's, uh, it is a white lie. No, that's but I gotta a, say, no, it's it, I will continue that conversation. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. I would say, uh, yeah, I do actually. But you know, thank you so much for the compliment. I would never say the the white lie or or whatever lie of saying if I didn't have a girlfriend, no. I'd be interested. It was yeah. always. I do. Thank you so much. That's such a compliment. Like, that's so sweet of you for asking. No compliments, no nothing. Mm. Just fact of the matter. Like, nope. I do. 
my 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 response is always oh thanks um let me <clears throat> let me change the subject because regardless of whether I have a significant other or not which I do um <clears throat> it's unimportant like I should I should be able to say no and yeah. I'm not, and I'm not so that's a thing Shannon, you, you grab well, that no, microphone. No, Shannon, you, you, you yeah, smashed so, it. That's what I love about the, the q and A, especially when it gets down to this, is go. that I, I'm trying to keep the reins on this, but... No, I mean, I, I can always hit mute. No, you're good. No, go ahead, please. Shannon. So how I handle it now that I'm married, and uh, I kind of feel like where the conversation's going, if it's going that way of uh, like going down that road of like romantic, like they want to talk to me more than just a friendship kind of thing... Yeah. My first line is like, yeah, me and my wife, or I always throw my wife in the conversation. Like, yeah. you know, I, I try to shut it down immediately when it gets to a point where the conversation could change. Do, do you find that being in a relationship, suddenly you you get more of that attention? Absolutely. Than absolutely. Was... Really? You, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Both of <laughs> Thanks, Steve. You th- no, I'll say this. I'll say this. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, I see yes. a wedding ring on you, Shannon. Sean, you wearing your wedding ring? Yes. Uh, wedding yeah. ring on Nate. Uh, at, at some point, you'll have one. Yeah. You work out of your house, and, and hanging out here Oops. in the cigar shop is the most social interaction that you've had for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so Shannon. No, all right. They no, can't no, hear no. you. They let's, can't hear you. Let's go with Shannon. My, yeah. point is, my point is that, yes, uh, so there is a, an aspect of it that when you have a wedding ring on, you're, you're, you're cool. This is, a, this is a guy response. This no, dude it is. Response. It actually is. Yeah. Um, that when you are wearing that wedding ring, because I, I was married before. Yeah. Not why I got divorced, but when I had the wedding ring on and you are in a social social interaction with people and a girl's talking to you, especially if you have a rapport with them over a period of time, there is a level of commitment. And it's not always the fact that you are leading that person on, but there is a, there's a, a fact that there is that stability. This is This is documented over a lot of like shows anymore you know what i mean that like there's a young and i'm gonna get into to stereotypes but like i love the the show mad men right and there is a history there and it's relevant today that with the the open uh, divorce rate that there is something that sometimes happens or if you're you're in a relationship but you're a solid guy i am the first to admit and, and a lot of people might disagree with me but there is a play there there is a stability there and this is what they're looking for and a lot of the the guys or a lot of people that they're they're interacting with that are that are available don't display these characteristics but they're looking for that characteristic or several characteristics that it could even be not really ill ill willed but it's it's natural that they're gravitating towards that and shannon you i don't know if you agree with that if you have Okay, I'll I'll throw this out there. Uh, if you have like a, I think it's wrong. I'm not saying that. Uh, I mean. No, I'll I'll say this. Uh, if you're a young person and you have like maybe a a daddy complex, right? And you're like stability. Stability is your thing, right? So they're in a stable relationship, like whatever. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, but then again, you also have to recognize the quality of person who is going after someone who they know is in a relationship so that's like the turning you have point, right? you have you have a, so that's, a that's wedding ring point. on you have you have like a, a stable Agreed. established relationship you you have a wedding ring on like if if a woman comes up to you and goes hey you're uh you're hot like if that if that's if that's what they say, hey, Dustin, right? or Dustin, or whatever, you zoom in or, real quick. or Dustin, 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 you have, zoom you have, in on uh, these two while she's have, talking. You, right. No, you have you have no Just ring on. Awkward. You have no ring on, right? So if you were if you were to go if someone were to come up to you and say, "Oh, you're you're hot," you'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna like an MBD. Like I can't, I can't. Like that's not a thing. No big deal." Real about it, like I'm, everybody, either right. male or female, we yeah. love. People love attention when people are pouring it's it on you. Point. Okay, but you have to have that cutoff. Yeah, 
you absolutely have to cut off an off ramp. Okay. To shut them down and be like, look. So you got to be prepared so, to to yeah. to to cut it off to a point where a lot of times I, I'm going to say this. A lot of times that it comes down to a point where you're you're giving them advice. You're you're yeah. you're, you're like, yeah, no, this is yeah. how it works and all that stuff. But when when someone's on the other side of it, they're just like, no, this is what I. You're absolutely. This is what I want. Yeah. I can't find it, and they have that that personal relationship with you, and it's up to you as a person that's committed to say. Yeah to turn the script and say, you're absolutely right. And it's not saying like, Hey, if I was single, like I would absolutely do this, but it's like, it, it's you, it's just like any other interaction. It's being the mm-hmm. bigger person. It's, it's saying like, Hey, let's, let's find that person. Let's, mm-hmm. let's find you a me. Right. Yeah. That's since, you, since you exposed yourself. Cause a lot of times that happens. It happens where it's like, yeah. I want to ex- like, Hey, you seem unhappy or you seem happy, but I would love to do this. And and it's there's that temptation there. Yeah, I think that, that is a point where you say, you know what, I understand completely. I think the biggest problem nowadays is that people can be so disconnected, maybe in their marriage or relationship, when somebody heaps those praises on you and like, oh, you look good today, and they start walking you down that path. If you're it not strong, so- if you're not strong in your relationship. That can fill something that wasn't there. It fills the void. Exactly. And, and it's such a bad situation. Maybe and if it, you get caught in it, it's a bad road. It's a bumpy road, and it's a yeah. cliff. Maybe you know, it's, it's a, a terrible okay. road. Absolutely. So maybe it's maybe it's because I'm in a new relationship, right? I I started dating a guy who's like super uh, super into making sure that I feel secure, right? I like that though. Maybe maybe that's. Maybe that can turn you off, though. I get maybe that. Maybe that's that's where I'm at. But uh, like when I was single, right? Uh, when when people would be like, like right now, even even right now, like I'm in a I'm in a committed relationship. Right. Like we've we've established we're monogamous. It's a thing. I like that. We, You're going steady. We going steady. Who whose letter we, jacket's wearing? He's wearing mine, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I might I actually. She wears I'm, his I'm, hockey I'm wearing, jersey. I'm wearing, I'm wearing his hoodie, NBD. That's, but it's not exclusive. It's Ohio. Whatever. I, I care if you're about. You want a BS hoodie? I'm I, gonna be upset. Uh, mm-hmm. He gave me one of those. Oh, you um, bought one. I bought one too. Uh, but he, he and I, he and I are. We we care for each other, right? Yeah. Um, if he were to do that with another another girl that would be a problem if right. i were to do that with another dude that would be a problem right that's fair so that's a whole conversation between the two of us okay right so the being a significant other is a like a conversation it's a conversation communication is yeah it comes nice. down to communication all right like that's what it comes down to I got, I got, I got yep. Fire one away. final, Fire away. Yeah. one final Sorry. question. Fire yeah. fry. All right. So I'm going to do this because we, we actually, I, I've enjoyed the audience participation. I'm going to start this, right? So we, we've dwindled because it's gotten late. Yeah. <clears throat> Grab that microphone. One of you three out there and I'm, I'm going to, we're going to go round robin. We got six people in the garage right now and we're going to, we're going to end this. And before we do this, I, I do want to. I'm going to do my my due diligence as a, a host. Thank you to Tinderbox at Easton for the first one. I love the second part of this because we yeah. <laughs> we get so far off of it. So People that actually like t- that tune in, right? Like especially the Facebook side, they tune in. And they're like, "Oh, cigars and whiskey," and they're like, "What the fuck am I listening to?" But if they are at the same. It's live, yeah, and it's it, and the more you listen, this is what we do, and I'm excited about it. Next week will be a little bit different. We've got uh, Rolling Barrel Tours back on, right? So, Dustin, I hope you're going to be a part of it because I know you, you love what they're doing, like Becca and everyone else. we got we got Rolling Barrel Tours coming on, so it'll be a little different. This is this is one where it's a true life topic, and this is if you're you, when you're listening to the, the part two, if you, if you still tuned in the uh, second part on Facebook Live and you're like, what the fuck are they talking about? This is what it's all about. When you, you do the, the whiskey, you do the cigars, and you have good people around, this is what the community page is all about. So, um, Tinderbox at Easton, thank you for the Sublimes Oscuro. 
Great cigar. Amazing. Got two nines and an eight out of ten. Uh, thank you, Tanya, for the Whistle Pig 12. Of course. Yes, we did. Well, it's <laughs> yeah, gone. We, we killed that bottle. <laughs> if you listen to the podcast, you can tell we killed it. Um, <laughs> we had help. I will. Yeah, we did have help. Uh, I also want to point out again with the Patreon page. So Bobby Hirschman asks, how can I support the podcast? And uh, a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, he asked the same question. So patreon.com, this is a very simple way to support the podcast. Patreon.com slash bourbon and BS podcast. You can actually do the default is still $5, but you can donate whatever you want. It could be $1, it could be $20, it could be a million dollars, whatever it is a month. And it's very simple. It'll deduct that from whatever card you, you use. Yeah. And I appreciate everything. We appreciate everything uh, that you guys are contributing because it's it's actually growing. And it's it give me give me the opportunity to not go out of pocket for shirts and shit that we want to do, right? So yeah, give me a little bit of that. Um, I also want to thank uh, Altidus USA, the Romeo Reserve. You guys, what do you think? Amazing. I like Nate. it a lot. <laughs> I already finished it. Yeah, same. I- I love the cigar. I, I think it doesn't get enough recognition and attention that it deserves. Cause, yeah. yeah. I think part of that's because it's on the shelf in a tubo. Yeah. That's the only yeah. size we carry. It's in a tube. But it's an absolutely fantastic, smooth, medium body cigar with really good flavor. Did you just drop the cigar I gave you? No one saw it. No, no one. On Every, everyone saw it. It's fine. Everyone Go heard it now. Go ahead. No, Because you brought it up. Yeah. Go on. And there's a hair hanging from that cigar now. I know. I will. No, look I absolutely I love it. the Romeo and Julieta Reserve. It's a great yeah. cigar. Tanya. No, the the fact that it's in a tin is something that normally would throw me off from buying it. Uh, but it is beautiful. Um, it paired well with the whiskey, mm-hmm. and I have to say the retro hail was beautiful. Um, yeah. I I have All nothing right. bad to say about it. The construction was amazing. It lasted throughout the you know the topic that we had. Yeah. And for me to have something that lasts throughout me talking for no good reason is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eric brought up the point earlier when we were talking about the unwanted attention. He says when the customer. So Eric also works part time in the shop, and he says when the customers wouldn't. But he's like, tell the story, tell the story. I was like, what? What are you talking about? He says. When the customers wouldn't buy that stuff until they heard your voice telling them to buy it, that did happen one time, and I I, I took it as a compliment, and we made the sale. I said you should buy that humidor. All right. So last okay. question. Yep. Last question. If you got it, if you gotta go take I'm care good. of your business. No, we're good. I'll take. I tell you what. Do what I you go, need to do. I, I'll, I'll go, go first. first. No, I'll, can I no. can I go first and then Tanny, I'll you go, go pee. first, right? Yeah. All right. So here here's the final question for the night, right? So awesome. how was your Valentine's Day? <clears throat> what <laughs> this is so deep for a, a bourbon and oh, BS gosh. podcast. Yeah. I love this question. All right, here we go. So saddle up for about fifteen more minutes. What does the word love mean to you? <laughs> Tanya, get after it. You want to an answer Whoa. first. <laughs> okay. So you wish you would have gone pee. I really can I can I go pee? <laughs> no, you got to like, answer because I have pee too, so I'm the uh, last. So the uh, the word love, the word love to me. This means, might abbreviate your answer. Yeah, the the abbreviation because I have to pee. Uh, means listening. Like you, you have to be That's able. So so important. I know you have to be able to listen to the person that you feel like you're in love with. You have to understand where they're coming from. You also have to be able to make those judgments on what will make them feel loved. Uh, it's a great answer. It is, great answer. It, is a, it is something that requires communication, which is a buzzword. I get it. Uh, but it also is something that requires you to take notice and make effort in your relationship. Effort, communication, and just basically knowing who you're in a relationship with. That is what love is. The last part you said, knowing who you're in a relationship with, is is um, probably yeah. the most impactful for me. Yeah. So that's, knowing that's, your my, significant uh, other is, that's is, my opinion is of huge. what love is. It's amazing. Yep. All right, you can go. Thank you. You got it. 
All right, Nate, you want to go or you want to do the audience? Let's do the audience first. All right, Dust, all right, <laughs> Dustin's got the mic. So are we going down the line? Yep. Sure, okay. man. <laughs> so um, as, as some of you may know, and a lot of the audience w- does not, my my father is actually a uh, minister. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I try to go to church whenever I can. But when it comes to love, I always refer back to um, a verse from 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Yep. You know, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not de- delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. Always hopes. Always perseveres. Love never fails. Yeah. To to me, you know, it's yes, those are words, but in all reality, if you take those words just for words, whether you're religious or not, to me, I think wholeheartedly that is exactly what love is to me it's putting the other person first yeah it's like tanya said it's listening not just listening but actively listening actively understanding actively being patient for the other person you know those who've been married for one month three months three years 10 years 15 years whatever it may be you know they all understand that you know and it, it's not just the verse it's it's a way of life and i think whether you're you're dating someone but if you're committed to them and you truly love them then that's what love is no i love that you said that because um i've actually read that at a wedding Hardly. myself and 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 um i was at a funeral this this last weekend on sunday and and that same verse was read at a funeral and it's, it's mm. such a universal first Corinthians is, is very important. Um, I, I like you said it because it, it's very impactful whether you're mm-hmm. religious or not, but you, you go to the weddings, you go to funerals, uh, funerals and it and doesn't this is matter. Like that, you said, that, it's universal. That people read and they, they, they relate to mm-hmm. because whether you're in the beginning of a stage or you're at the end of a stage, it's, Absolutely accurate. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing that. All right, Shannon's Shannon. next. Yeah, you got to. What is it? What does the the word love mean to you, Shannon? Well, first I'll say for those and, of you still listening, we, we've we've carried on. This is one of the longest. I I knew this going into it, yeah, right? Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I knew I'm it. Sorry. Well, first of all, no, I'll, say, uh, no. I'll say Amen to Dustin. That's a beautiful verse. Um, to me, love. Love is a. Uh, Everybody has your beautiful moments, the good days. Yeah. But to me, love is in the bad days, in the shit of life, when the bills aren't getting paid and you're struggling to make it work. Um, you know this. You know this very, 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 very well. So very heartfelt right now. Yes. When the bills aren't getting paid and you don't know what's going to happen next, and you can look at each other and be like, you know, we're in it together. It's either we sink or swim, but we're together if we sink. It's life. If we swim, like, you got each other's back, you hold hands, and you charge forward through life. I mean, you just got to grind it out. And when you can get in the shit and still look at each other and say, I love you, that's love to me. I like that. Sean. All right, Sean, let's go around. I, this is this that type of podcast, right? Like, we just roll through it. Yeah, I, I'm in the worst seat. I'm- <laughs> Why are you in the worst seat? We've had both these guys on the podcast yeah. before telling their amazing stories. Yeah. I got to follow that. You want me to, yeah, want me to go before you? Yes. No, I, no. I want that to happen. No, you're you're the, you're the host. You go last. All right. Sean, let's, let's have it, man. I don't... I knew I was screwed the minute I had to follow Shannon because... No, he's no, no. no. It, a lot of what Speaks he says. Heart, man. Yeah, no, no. A lot of, well, a lot of what he says is kind of what I resonate with in love and just being... To me, it's... I look at love just how I how I love whether it's my wife or my friends to me I feel like it, I do the best I can to be unconditional um good and, and good and bad and right. the bad's like he said the hardest part going through so many things in life life just throws so many curveballs at you and yeah. to be able to 
to just just brush it off and keep moving forward um, and going through the rough stuff, being there when they're at their worst, uh, who's ever you're with, whoever you're with, even not just, and it goes past the relationship. It goes through friends. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's when, um, you know, I always make it a point if somebody's ever like gets sick or goes to the hospital, I want to be there. Yeah. Any way I can. Um, and I've done that and I'll continue to do that. And whether it's even that, or if it's, they're just struggling with something, almost to a to a fault i want to be there and to the point where they have to say no you have to go away and leave me alone because i will stand there next to them and if it's whether i'm saying something to them or just staying there and being in their presence i will be there it's how i look at this yeah thank you guys for sharing that i know you guys are in the audience and you guys are a part of this and that's one of the reasons why i have that mic out there is because uh if you're listening to the audio side of it it, it makes no difference but if you're watching the the video side of it we're all staring at, like, they're looking at us I and we're know. staring at you guys. Yeah. I want them to hear it. You know what I mean? This is, is super impactful, right? So, all right. So, Nate, you, you, you don't want to follow Dustin, Shannon, yeah, and no, Sean. That's fine. That's Get fine. after it and, and I'll, I'll close it out for you. Okay. Um, to me, there's a couple things. One, what does love mean to you? So, if you remember back when Josh Bentley was on and he talked about, your board of directors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The person that you love had better be in that board of directors. They, they better be the CEO of that board of directors. Right. Because that's the person that you're living with. That's the person that you are doing things for. That's right. You know, that's what you're working for working. That's who you're representing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not just you. It's that other person. You're half of a whole. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And so that other person better have some significance in whatever choices you make. Um, but also for me, it's about finding what makes that other person happy without sacrificing anything of yourself. Uh, okay. And okay. I don't, and I don't mean. No, no, no. Yeah, it's and, good. It's good. Yeah. Like I'm not saying like you don't have to give up anything of who you you have been or things that you have done because we we've all uh, done things or been involved in things that when we finally met that person that was truly special in our life like we gave up certain things because we're like those things are going to cost me this relationship yeah and that relationship is more important than those things yeah yeah um. But, like, one of the things I know that makes uh, my wife happy is her laughing. And the easiest way for her to laugh is me be silly. Yeah. So. I love that. And I'm a person that, like, I don't want to do anything that's embarrassing. But at the same time, I want to do. That's a contradiction right yeah, there. Yeah, no, it, it's I, amazing. I, I don't want to do, thing, do, what... do things that are embarrassing. But at the same time, I want to make my wife laugh. You're also a two-step yeah. in the shop. So. For example, not saying it's embarrassing. I'm saying like low key, it's embarrassing. No, so for example, <laughs> I know that Jess loves when I'm wearing my Carhartts with a long sleeve tee, like I have on underneath this hoodie. Right. So before I left the house, I was like, "Hey Jess, I was I was in the bedroom with everything but my hoodie on." I and don't, I don't want to know where we're going with this. No, I know, no, no, I know no, no, where we're no, no. I know yada, where we're yada, going. Yada. I'm wearing Carhartt overalls. It's not like <laughs> I'm okay. it's not like I'm exposing anything with those. <laughs> You're in your bedroom. You can do whatever you want, man. But no, so like... so I have my Carhartt overalls and I have a long sleeve tee. And I tell Jess, like, hey Jess, go stand by the by the front door and then look towards the living room. I don't know. And where, there's a hallway. Where are we going here? I, just, I come. My mind is in a different spot right now, and I don't. Anyone seen the movie? No, no, no. no, no. I'm I'm here for you. Yeah, let's go. Anyone? <laughs> I'm here for Jess. <laughs> exactly. I'm here for Jess. Let's go. So the, the, the car hearts came off. No, no, no. Car hearts right. were on. Right. Anyone seen the movie Risky Business? Mm-hmm. Yes. Remember when he wasn't wearing car hearts? I'll tell you that right true. now. You slid through with a car heart and a t-shirt on. Oh my god! Whitey tidies, there it is. Yes. No, I was wearing my car hearts with my long sleeve tee, and I slid across the floor right into 
where she was standing in the hallway in front of her to where that's all she saw was me sliding in my car hearts. That's amazing. And she just busted up laughing. Yeah. Now, to me, like, that's that's kind of embarrassing to do that. But for sure. For out her. Your, it's out of your comfort zone. It is. But at the same time, it made her she laugh. She says it was funny. Yeah. It, it made her laugh. And also, I'm at home. She's the only person in the yeah. house. What do I have to be embarrassed over? Exactly. Blinds are closed. Curtains are drawn. No, right. Uh, you got, you, well, you got this. Like, so the neighbors. You. Curtains just, were open. It's All right. just you and her. So that's what love means to you? Well, you... You have to you have to find what makes that other person happy as well. It can't all just be one person or the other. Like each person doesn't get no. their own way all the time. Right. Like yeah. you you have to find what's both fun for you and fun for the other person. Yeah. Me me doing that was funny for the both of us. No. It's I amazing. Agree. <laughs> I agree. Uh um, oh. All right, so, so this is always how it goes when I'm going to do my closing remarks. Right. Right. As You're soon as I start talking, you, you, you everyone your, wants to talk, too. Closing remarks. Shannon, yeah, go ahead. So I just ended with this on my end. Um, if anybody's ever heard of the five love languages? Yes, yes, yes we no, do. Okay. Uh, think, God damn it. Think, Tana's, Tana's no. going to talk for 25 minutes. No. I think yes. if you can figure this out. So the five, the five languages are words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality of time or acts of service i think in a relationship you have to figure that out between yourselves for me yeah. it's words of affirmation for my wife it's acts of service if you can figure that out in your relationship that will carry you a long ways in what you do in a relationship i'm gonna give you before like two seconds before you say your closing remarks i'm gonna pull like, the reins gonna, back I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I this. love having you on the podcast. Like we, but I, uh, we, we had this talk on the last podcast, right? Okay. Um, the, the, like, the five love languages. That was we a, did. That was we a did. Comment, yeah, it was right? a great, great conversation. Yeah. yeah. Right? So I will say this. Um, my, my significant other and I, we, we did that quiz, right? Uh, it turns <sighs> out. Okay. Right? I made him do it. It was low-key that we all knew that yeah i mean because like i'm obviously <laughs> wearing the pants in that um so he he did it because i asked and we matched good on <laughs> on on our love languages all right. um but i will say this like the the being able to be silly in a relationship like that's huge <laughs> like for instance uh one of the things that he does that's stupid it's so stupid is he like randomly like will give me kisses all over my face right and it makes me laugh and me laughing makes him happy yep so you're like both happy has, it has makes you happy has, makes right. so you're both like, happy right we're both happy like i'm laughing because he's happy and he's happy because he's doing this nonsense right so that's a big deal in it is a big figuring deal figuring out like so it's all encompassing right yeah it's it's all encompassing so so nope. your your closing remarks my thank you tanya yep are you closing Le us out steve I'm gonna, I, I, we'll see where it goes here i'm gonna close this out to my best ability. Um, I want to thank our sponsors. Yep. <laughs> Again. Again. The, the sponsors. It's been a while. Um, <laughs> what does love mean to me? Um, this is, this is, I just blew my own lighter out. <laughs> it's very interesting. It, 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 all right, Tanya. <laughs> when it comes to friends, love means it's actually something to strive for. Um, love is uh, putting others first, and it's something that I, I I struggled with for a long time. And I, what I what I like about the the concept of love that it actually drives me that you live by example, whether or not you actually believe in the, the example. But this is what you want out of your life, and and so. When you don't have, you, you don't surround yourselves all, all the time by people that are driving you. And you are surrounded sometimes with people that are driven by you, that uh, you have to find that compromise. And um, the love is, is that it's not always positive. And everyone talks about the, um, the romantic relationship, right? Yeah. And that's, 
that this very relative to that, that if you're giving, 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 and they're just taking, 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 it's not always negligent or malicious, but they're just taking, 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 because that's, you are not fulfilled. So you have to fill, fulfill yourself with someone, whether it be a friend or, or a circle of friends. We'll get to that point with the relationship next, but it, it's, it's, it's a give and take. Love is, is something for me, definition of love, or what, what is love to me is, is, is being there for that person and hoping that they're there for you. Um, but it's not just that. It's what is the value coming from? We talked about the, the whistle pig value. We talked about the cigar value. It's like, what's the people value? Yeah. And, and people in my life, it's, you don't always 100% agree. Like, there are people in your life that, whether it be that significant other, whether it be that friend that's always in trouble, but they're still your friend, that love still exists because you want you want to get something. You want them to get something. Everyone wants to win. That's love. Winning is, is, is love. You want people to, to get something from it. When it comes to a personal relationship, for me, what, the thing I've learned about, um, so uh, again, pushing 40 and, and, and with love being something that I've struggled with for a long time, but I've always had as a, uh, it's a forefront. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been through the ups and downs and everything like that. And I, what, what I'll, I'll, I'll speak to, to my relationship now, my life now is that, no one talked about this and the, the six people that talk or five people that talked before me, but when you're in a, a romantic relationship, yeah. you, you want all these things that everyone talks about. I'm not going to reiterate all these things that you guys hit some major points. The one thing that no one talked about, and I want, I don't want this to come across as the only thing that, that is important to me because it's always about putting those person, that person's feelings and, 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 and emotions before yours as long as it doesn't sacrifice yours. Right. And that's the, 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 the give and take. But I also want the romantic side, right? So if you're going to be in that romantic relationship, we talked about Valentine's Day. You, got, you have to be, and this is way too late to introduce this, but you have to be attracted to that person. Well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> No, but no one talked about that. Yeah, so no, sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say did. this. I'm yeah, going to say this. You're right. You're, right. you're, you're attracted to that person. <laughs> For whatever reason. For whatever reason. Because some of them are stupid. I gotta tell you. Like you, some of them are stupid. You gotta be. I got, you gotta like, be. I'll tell this. Anyone watching right now stupid. is that all this stuff is. Everyone talking about this is. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, any of that stuff. But you gotta have a romantic and a physical attraction to those those, those people in your life, and and and, and that's it's stupid. Well, that's stupid. But I, what I gotta say is, is that. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta figure that out, because that is something that that is fulfilling, and we talked about this in the terms of banging that person. You you want to make love to that person. No one talks about that stuff. When we do a podcast like this, is that there's got to be a physical attraction. No, no one wants to talk about it. No, nope. because it's, it's superficial. But I gotta tell you, is that if you have a romantic relationship, if you have a physical relationship with that person, and on top of that. You are trying to support that person, but if it goes too far to the left or right, and I'm not talking about political views, but if it goes too far to one side and you're just trying to support that person and you're trying to care for that person, but there's no physical or romantic side of it, it will fail. If you go too far to the other side and you're just trying to keep the sexual chemistry there, it will fail. Yeah. Do not forget either side of it. It's all about balance. That's what we talk about on this podcast all the time is that it's all about balance. So when you look at that, is that if you have been been constantly supporting that person or you feel like they've been constantly supporting you, I will be as blunt as I can be right now. So anyone listening to this point, you better bang that person. As blunt as I can be. That's, that's as blunt as Shannon, you're laughing. Hey, hey, that's as blunt as I can be. Steve. Fucking, like, I, I got to tell you is like, that you have to keep it to that level. You, you right. I know I'm right. No, 100%. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is that you, you have to take care of that person. 
in all facets. And, and I, 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 I care about Liz and I love the fact that we're in a relationship and Nate, you said it, we joked about it, that you're punching above your weight class or whatever else. Like Jess is a saint. So am I, by the way. And, and I am too. <laughs> like, like just, but when just it comes down to record. it is that what's important <laughs> is, 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 is making sure that all the needs are met. And I'm not just trying yeah. to make it about sexual needs. I'm saying all the needs are met. You're right. Stop focusing on the other side of things when that's the weakness do both and that's what i'll say and I, and i'll I ask you guys to to cheers take care of yourself take care of other people happy valentine's day even though we're a week late thank you cheers tanya thank, you, thank cheers. you so much for everything yep obviously guys thank you for for tuning in thanks enjoy your night yep thanks <laughs>